working on a weekend like usual. Way off in the deep end like usual. Niggas swear they passed us, they doing too much. Haven't done my taxes. Welcome to From the Seven Podcast, where we always try to bring a different perspective for the mindsets of the real world. I'm your boy Deuce. Always with me, my right hand man, Stat. Today we got a legend in the building, y'all. A lot of people looked up to this dude from the city. Changed a lot of lives, including mine, man. Um, BC's very own, one of the most decorated overseas players of all time, man. Tyrese Rice, man. Welcome to the seven. What's good? What's good, fellas? Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir, man. We're going to dive into this, man. We got a lot to talk about today, man. We're going to just get into it, um, get his views on the state of the game today. You know, highlight his career, man, for a lot of people who, if y'all don't know who this man is, you're going to know by the end of this episode. Um, but before we get into all of that, quick announcements. Yep. So y'all can follow us at From the Seven Podcast on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Um, I'm at StatZay, Deuce at underscore Deuce West. We got From the Seven Podcast merch on the way. Uh, Stat merch is the link in my bio. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers right now, man, so we can keep bringing the, the content and the value. It's going to be a good episode, man. So look, <clears throat> share it with a friend. It's going to be a lot of gems. If you a hooper, pay attention, take notes, get your notepad out, bro. This is going to be one of them ones. So mm-hmm. um, make sure y'all keep tapping in with us. We appreciate all the love we've been getting so far. And it's still very early, so it means a lot to us. But um, let's go ahead and get into it, bro. And look, man, if you're not a basketball player, we're also going to talk business. Trusted Legacy is a big thing he got going on right now. So this show going to bring a lot of gems, man. So tap in, man. I think this this one going to be our best one yet for sure. Um, but let's just get started, man. I'm gonna go ahead and I ain't gonna lie. I gotta get on my phone for this one. He got so many awards and accomplishments, <laughs> dog. I'll have to study that jump for a couple years to remember. <laughs> um, Euro League champion, Euro League Final Four MVP, Euro League Finals top scorer, FIBA Champions League MVP, FIBA Champions League star lineup, Euro Cup champion, Euro Cup MVP, Euro Cup Finals MVP, All Euro Cup first team, Israel League champion, Israel League winner. Two-time All-American team, um, first team All-ACC, and two-time second team All-ACC. Let the people know, Reese, man, how the hell did you do all that, bro? (laughs) (laughs) Bro, that was just, no, you know, really, bro, how the the hell did you do all that, bro? How did it start, man? I had a dream. I guess it just started with a dream. Um. I don't know. Start yeah. with a dream. I feel like you know, if you got a if you got a mission that's in front of you, if you have something that you want that's in front of you, and you love it, and you learn that you love it early, um, nothing's gonna get in your way of, of getting to the to the top of that. You know, of maxing out on that. I'm actually kind of mad because they left a few things off of that joint. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah, for sure, real. for sure. They left a few uh, things off. Of that I ain't gonna joint lie, too, it was but. a lot of shit. Um, <laughs> I could have passed through like three or four, trying to hurry up and get down, but nah, for sure. Nah, man, having a dream. A dream. <sighs> well, I know we earlier. Um, I had a chance to we, we did some content for you that you're gonna end up dropping later, but you was talking about how. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a lot of your family is from Salisbury. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, we're in Charlotte, so it's about what 45 minutes from here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> from here, but you talked about like. I mean, you started playing at like five. Yeah, from around four or five. Four or five. Yeah. So, what was I mean? What got you to like? What was what was the thing that got you to start playing at five years old? Uh, I come from a family the hoopers. Um, all the women in my family hoop. Um, my mom, my aunt, uh, my grandmother. My grandmother was the one. Um, then I had you know one of my uncles hoop too, and then other family members. But if, from my immediate family. My the women in the family were the were the athletes, mm. and put the ball in my hands early. My mom was my first coach at like five or six at the uh, the place that we looked at today, yeah. Miller Rec Center, the Halls Gym, um, and that was it. Mm. You know, she she gave me the rock, and I fell in love early. Yeah, I think that's dope, bro. Because um, one of the things that you know me and Deuce always talk about, like I started Stat as a training company, and one of the things that I always when I was studying how training worked and just players and like different stories, it was always like the guys who made it to the level that you made or even close to it was, they had that foundation. They had Mm -hmm. somebody that kind of, you know, when they, when they decided basketball was what they wanted to do or whether they didn't decide it and it was just in their family, like what you're saying, it was always somebody there to kind of 
show them the way. And um, I think it's it's dope to even just confirm that with you because you've done so much with basketball. But like you can look at you know us going back to where it all started. Like there's so much history there where your family has kind of paved that way. Um, so when we sit here and read off of the things that you've done, it's like it's really just you know paying homage to the to the people before you, and um, you know even being True able indeed. to go back to the community center and everything that you're trying to get done with that. I think it's dope to bring that back full circle too. So true indeed. True nah, indeed. for sure. Like it's it's one of them things, man. I mean, of course, we was just laughing off air about the impact, bro, that you that you left on a lot of kids that you didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? Like. I can remember vividly, dog. I know we were just talking about it, but this man right here, dog, literally had me wanting to. Ch- I, <laughs> I almost wanted to have my mom move so we could be in a different district because I didn't know what the hell was going on at Meadowbrook. <laughs> I did not know as a seventh grader, dog. This man had me want to ask my mom questions that I had no business. Here. Mom, why we can't move to Bird? Like, why we can't just go to Bird? Like. <laughs> But um, blue niggas, the blue niggas, blue bro, niggas. Number four, bro, had me wearing the headband to school and some more shit. But like, I think that's the cool part, man, because all that boils down to who came before you. Like Stat just said, man, like having your grandma be the one that's tough. Like, yeah. it's really in your bloodline. Yeah. Like some people really like, yo, I don't have anybody to show me the game. I gotta just want it. Like you was like, nah, I know what the game feel like. So mm-hmm. I want to touch on early part of, you know, going to LC Bird, a lot of people, mm-hmm. again, don't know you wasn't supposed to go there. Like, you were supposed to go and actually be at Meadowbrook yeah, where Meadowbrook. me and Stat went to. Correct. Um, so when you went there, we, we kind of talk about, you know, dark places, about mindset. Did you have any dark place when you went to Bird knowing you weren't going to be playing with the people that you were just playing with? Um, Yeah, you know, all of my friends, we all went to Fall the Creek and 90% of them went to Meadowbrook. mm um, but I mean, it was, it was okay because we still had our neighborhood that went, you know, that went to bird anyway. And, you know, I had to call friends over there, but, you know, getting a bird was by far the best thing that could have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was put in a situation where my coach allowed me to just, just go. Like, he just was like, all right, you know, freshman, you're going to play varsity. You're probably going to start soon. So here you go. It's just like, get ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like a situation that was kind of like that. So, you know, he just threw me in the fire and was like, all right, you know, you got to figure it out. Um, And I think that that's, you know, that was the best thing because you find out who you are. Yeah. You know, you find out who you are early. Um, And when you in a fire, the only way you can get out is if you keep going. Mm-hmm. Talk about that fire because we, I mean, you told me what that fire looked like and, and I didn't even realize that, I mean, let let people know what that looked like. I mean, we first two games. So I, my first two games in high school was Thomas Dell and George Whiff. At the time, Thomas Dell and Whiff was one and two in the state. Whiff was one. Thomas Dell was two. God, damn. Whiff had just played Reddick in the JJ. Yeah, they had just played Reddick in the um, in the state championship the year before that. Um, so those are my first two games, and he started me in the Whiff game as a freshman. <laughs> wait, wait, both games was at, at Whiff. No, I was at the crib. Okay, 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 okay. But I mean, same That's thing. still, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, same thing. My first game at Whiff, I had 40, by the way. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> by, the, by the way, nigga, hey, by the 40, way, I, had, I ain't never been scared nowhere. <laughs> that stamp um, you already, though. But, yeah. you know, I got I to gotta say that in that game, Re, my man's, knew Re from a, a kid, Southside Boys and Girls Club, you know, whatever, all of that. In the game, at the free throw line, early in the game, maybe like second quarter, it's a one and one. We at the line. He getting ready to try to box me out. He uh, they shoot the free throw. He jump out there. He try to crush me. Like, damn, tried to crush me. I'm talking like I ducked it. Like, hey, like, hey, yeah, what's yeah. going on with you? Yeah, like, what's up with you? Like, what you like? What you doing? Like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> nah, right. like nigga looked at me like, little nigga, like. <laughs> I was like, oh, I bet. Yeah. So now I know when I step on this floor, even though that's my man's, even though you my man's, I got to treat you like you. I ain't never seen you before. Oh, yeah. And like little lessons. I had like small lessons like that that I remember mm-hmm. um, throughout the game. And I had another one that was before that. But throughout the game, man, that kind of 
you know, switch of mentality. So, yeah, like, right, now so. I'm in a fire. Like, now I'm like, oh, no, nah, I, I got to get out of this. I got to figure this out, and I got to figure it out quickly. And that's and that's that's crazy. We um we never really thought about that and touched on that point. Like, that made him a dog instantly. Like, yeah. that's your first couple experiences you got. Like, us, it was like, we didn't have to go through that mindset to be like, we got to just dog eat dog world. Like, we all cool at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But, like, when we stepped in the court, we treated people like that. Like, damn, that's mm-hmm. my mans. I can't. I ain't gonna hold you. I won mm-hmm. on that shit. I was no, no. I'm saying the Metabro culture was like that for the sure. Metabro culture was like that, but I'm saying for for me personally, when we talk about like I just did my origin story, like I got labeled having a bad attitude because I was on that type shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah. Every time I stepped on the court, so like it, it, yeah. Damn man. So going from that man, crazy high school career, dog. You still again like your your impact on the city is. No, nah, dead ass, like, legendary stuff. Like, I got this Be Your Own Goat shirt on right now. Shout out Deuce Brand. Um, but that's what you are, man. Like, you you are your goat, and you're a lot of people's goat in the city, and that shit's going to last forever. Uh, like, being from that. Richmond is a I special place to, uh, to come up, man, and having people that you can look up to in your own city is amazing because some people look at people that they never even are able to reach or anything. Mm-hmm. So having you right there that close to the city – that shit was huge for a lot of kids, man. But then you go to Boston College, man. Before you get there, though, was Boston College uh, a school that you had looked into already, or did it just kind of like last minute fall in your lap type situation? Um, BC was around uh, for a while, um, all throughout my senior year, like maybe the summer, my junior summer, going into my senior year, my last AAU season is probably – when they really, uh, you know, when I really had conversations with them and, like, started to notice that they were at games often, you know, things like that. Um, but, you know, I wasn't qualified, so they couldn't offer me. Mm. Um, I signed in April. Like, I signed in April because I couldn't get my SAT. I couldn't get my SAT. I could not take the SAT. Like, I couldn't, like, it wasn't for me. Like, I couldn't sit in there for that, you know, for those four hours and, yeah. and really be able to do that. So I had to get bird to put me in like six core classes so it would all count towards my gpa you can't even do that no more mm. you can only have four now God damn. Like you can't even do that and they put me in six so six of my seven classes was core classes so Just it to all counted towards my gpa so that i could qualify yeah um and then i qualified in april and then they they officially offered me so them staying around um throughout that time out. you know it kind of you know helped my decision because you talked about um earlier you said that you play Oak Hill, and that kind of brought in some other schools. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess mm-hmm. you know, you know, talk about that process because, like you said, BC was there, and, and we talked a lot today about um, just guys, you know, in the state of the game now, where it's like knowing what that right situation looked like. So, you know, speak on that as far as like BC being there and then playing mm-hmm. Oak Hill and how that kind of changed things. Um, so after the Oak Hill game, you know, everybody like not everybody, but a lot of schools started to come around. Arizona, UNLV. Um, what else? It was one more. I went, took a visit down to Florida. Mm. Um, a couple of schools, you know, came after that. But I looked at their situations as well and what they had going on. Like Arizona had Nick Wise coming the next year. Mm. Um, Florida had just brought in Antonio Green. Like uh, UNLV, I ain't know nothing about UNLV other than that it was in Vegas, Vegas. and it was on the <laughs> other side of the world. Like that was it. Yeah. Like I knew I didn't want to be close to home, but I didn't want to be that far. I didn't yeah. even know what Las Vegas was. Yeah. So like I wasn't thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? Like the time, I ain't know nothing other than Florida, New York, and DC. Yeah. Like that was about it. Like that's all we knew. Um. So going through that process with those schools, it, it really, I didn't think nothing of them. Like. It was no like I I knew that they didn't really want me like you didn't really yeah. want me like you see me now yeah um, though right. I knew I was in like a weird position like I was in a position of uh, the mid majors thought I was like too good but the high majors didn't think I was good enough mm. like some high majors yeah. like so it was like that tweener thing like they like a uh, Ohio I had Ohio University East Tennessee State yeah and then Arizona like it's like that's a big that's, that's a big gap there yeah, for sure. Yeah. So when you, like, was there a close second if BC didn't work out? Did you have a second place in mind? No, I didn't. But if it, if I did, if it didn't work out, I think I would have went to a and I think I would have went Bro. to a and Yeah. I wasn't, I didn't want to be, like, my mom used to always be like, you can be a big fish in a little pond. Like, yeah. 
nah, I'm either with them or I'm going to go where, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. where I really want to go. So Damn, that's crazy. Man, that, how, that would it, like that. how that would have transitioned. Because BC, BC situation was like Bird. Like, you played as a freshman. You yeah. got all rookie team ACC. Yeah. So looking back on it now, like how things lined up for you, was that the same position you felt when you went to Bird? Did you feel like they just rolled you the ball? No, they didn't do that. Ooh. Not at all. Um, I just knew it was an opportunity. Okay. I knew that they had a, a senior guard at the time, and I knew it was possible for us to to coexist. Um, you know, I ended every game my freshman year except for one, and we lost that y'all too in the Elite Eight to Villanova. I can, still can't believe why he ain't played me. Do the sec anyway. Um, <laughs> But no, nah, it wasn't a situation like that. I just knew that I could coexist with the other guard that was there. And then the next year, if I did what I was supposed to do as a freshman, they would give me the keys and, and it would be, you know, it would be my show for the next three years. One, one thing I admire about that when we was talking about it earlier, man, we we was talking about just, you know, where the game is today. And I, I wouldn't even say today. I feel like overall, um, when you look at guys that play and where they choose to go to, a lot of times – um, and you said it perfectly, like, guys just not really self-aware about who they are and what system they fit in. And, and for you to kind of know that going into it um, was dope. And, and for the players that's watching this, like, y'all y'all might hear Boston College right now and think, like, what you see Boston College as today. But at this time in <sighs> basketball, like, Bro, Boston, anything ACC, you was you was already league bound. Right, anything, mm -hmm. bro, coming from the city at that time, anything yeah. D1 was crazy. So the mm -hmm. fact that Tyrese yeah. Rice was able to get to yeah. Boston College, yeah. I told you this, bro, like, we was guys coming in in Meadowbrook trying to figure out how do we get in front of those same coaches, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. you going to BC, we really was having conversations within our circle of, like, well, maybe they was at the VCU joint. We need to get to VCU because mm -hmm. everybody, you know, you go to yeah. VCU, that's where the college is at. And, like, mm -hmm. it was a huge <laughs> deal, you know. And and when you look at the game today, if you was playing the, what you was doing then, if you was playing here now, like, you'd be yeah. up a couple M's. Let's keep it a 1,000. You yeah. know what I'm yeah, saying? He would, yeah, he would have yeah, went <laughs> yeah. straight to the league. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. So, you know, just seeing, sure. you, seeing you pick Boston College at that time um, and what you did there, I mean, you know, the iconic – UNC game, Yo, that's listen, just one listen, of the situations. Listen, so this man, again, dog, this man, I looked at the first ever basketball, high school basketball game I went to, saw this dude play, wanted to change districts, wore a headband <laughs> in school for a whole year, everything, right? Then I have a dream school, which is UNC. I'm a sophomore in high school now. Reese is at BC. This is your junior year. Junior year. This man, and I just looked up the date so I could beat, you know, how like it's clean. March 1st, 2008, this man had me again thinking about a whole nother realm of basketball, and he made me transfer schools, bro. That is the crazy. Like, literally, I went from wearing a headband because of this man. This man dropped 46 against UNC. I don't know what the fuck going on again. On TV and everything. <laughs> hey, Reese, I don't know what's going on again. Same story. I don't know what's going on with these blue guys. This dude on the white jersey now. Oh, that's Reese. What? Like, what? It didn't even make sense to me. It was breaking news on sports and everything. That is the decision when I said, I looked at myself. Yeah. I'm a sophomore now at Meadowbrook. I, did, yeah. I just told you I ain't play. Yeah. JV, I said I got to do something else. Yeah. Like I can't I can't be Reese right now if I'm if I'm on the pond, bro. But look, bro, that's that's the, the craziest part. Like I literally tra transfer schools. Again, he made me do another shift in life. Like I was like it's got to be more to this shit. It's got to be more. And I, fact, that's bro, when I left that's Meadowbrook, the impact bro. that he had and like when we talk about the greats and anything, like we talk about the impact. Like you really it could have went a whole couple different ways with your with your situation, but the mm -hmm. fact that you was there in at LC Bird and what you did, we followed everything that you yeah, did. You know, facts. the guys from the city, like we younger than you, and we was coming up behind you, and we followed that. I told you the story about. I mean, we grew up in Iron Gate. There was the food line to, at the front, and like I remember going in there. You always go to the magazine section because we didn't have mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the gun magazine. Yeah, that was our I'm social looking media. at the source <laughs> magazine, and media. then you looking at the basketball jumps because they always mm -hmm. had. It was certain basketball magazines. You had the one where it was just like about ratings and stats, mm -hmm. and it, was, it had like 50 niggas on the front. Mm -hmm. right. But then you had the slam joints. You had it was right, different types. Right, right. And I remember opening. I went up to the jump. I remember opening up the slam magazine, and you really sitting in the aisle reading through the whole joint. You ain't skipping nothing. Right. 
I open this joint up. I see this man got a full page. Him on the left with the clean <laughs> red Boston College joint, and the whole right side is the words about like what just happened. And this was after the the UNC joint, I believe. And you had like a three page, four page story in the Slam magazine. And like when we talk about impact, you know, and what we want to do at this point, even with Trusted Legacy and what we're doing with this platform, mm-hmm. like that stuff is important, bro. Because at that time. You, if you loved basketball, that grew your love for the game because you saw somebody yeah, that was magazine. just killing niggas in your city yeah. on that stage, man. Yeah. So, I mean, when all of that was happening, was that something that you you were aware of? Or, like, what what was... No. Nah. No, nah, you, you ain't even thinking about it. Like, well, I'm not going... I can't speak for everybody. I, I've always been one foot after the other and just going Word. and going and going. I never even sat back. Like I, like I remember that I was in a slam magazine. I was in a slam magazine a couple of times, but I don't even remember like specifically what they looked like. I couldn't even tell you about some of the articles. Just for it's just like you just going and going. But in the grand scheme, it's like I grew up on a slam magazine. Mm-hmm. Like I grew up looking at a, at a slam yeah. magazine. Like them, I had the subscription. I got them joints to my crib. Yeah. Like that's what, crazy how that I was. got them to my crib. Yeah, and then to like you know to be in it, you know. When I was doing it, I remember when I did the first the first time I was in it. I remember when I was doing it, I was like, "Slam, like, man, nah, they playing. I ain't really about to be in no Slam magazine. Like, you don't see that. It's not normal. Yeah. Like, if I were to see it like now, knowing with social media and all oh, of yeah. these other things, it'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a kid that had a Slam subscription, like, understanding the people that were in the Slam, mm-hmm. like, you had to be of some kind of stature to be in the slam. Like, I, I never would, like, it didn't register. Yeah. Like, it still never registered. Like, now you say it, I'm just sitting here looking back like, damn, like. I was in the slam magazine. Nigga made a slam magazine. I missed, nah, bro, I, was I, in that, I was in there twice. Spread in that yeah. bitch. Like, I, I think was in the there question, twice. Though, so I, think like, the, I think the key question that I would want to know, too, I, Stat, you already know, I was like, I got, I got questions for Reese, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you, because at that time, man, again, what you did, People who didn't know you, you was on the like you was on the front page of the of the world at that point. Being on the Slam again, mm-hmm. that's that's the front page of the world. Mm-hmm. People were like from all walks of life getting that joint to their crib. Mm-hmm. So now they see you, right? So now you're on top of the world. How did you not let ego tie into? Because you got better after that. Like mm-hmm. the people that we know would have had 46 against UNC, and that would have been the pinnacle of their career. Yep. That would have been like. They would have lived on that forever. They'd be talking about it today, right? Now. That's like his 12th mm-hmm. thing he could talk about because he got 11 more things that was crazier than that. How did you not let ego tie into your success and how did you find that mindset to just keep trying to get better? Um, Because you can get taken off that high horse very quickly. Like, you, I mean, it can happen. You, It can happen like that. Like, we've seen it happen. Yeah. Like, you know, we've seen athletes... Um, get into great spaces and on top of the mountain and boom, something happened and it's over with. Yeah. Nobody remember you. All they remember is the is the fall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All I remember is all the bad things that you did. You know, maybe the attitude that you had. Like now they don't remember you for what you was actually doing. Mm-hmm. And so having like that kind of humility all the way through, it just had me, you know, stay grounded. Like stay in the moment. That's why I was like, I was always just Keep going one foot after the next, one foot after the next. And you don't get too high, you don't get too low. You remember the experience. Um, you appreciate the experience. Like, you you know that feeling. Like, that that shit feel great. Yeah. Like, it feel great in that feeling. Yeah. But you can't take that feeling and it take you somewhere that you ain't supposed to be. Like, that can't take you over the top and you start thinking that you're better than other people. Yeah. Like, you like if you, you only get, like, people that respect the janitor is people that I respect. For sure. Yeah, that's facts. For sure. Like, respect what that man doing. Yeah. Respect that that man, though his life might not be yours, you got to respect that man grind because he got to do something. Mm-hmm. So you got to stay low. Like, you can't go you can't go over the top. You can't start thinking that you're better than others because once you start going there, yeah, you might get to a certain space. Something going to happen is gonna, and it's going to sweep everything from under you. Now all them people that you thought was praising you like that, mm-hmm. they ain't there no more. You got to go back down to the roots of your shit. Like now you gotta stay with the people that's at the ground, like, and it just keep you there. And I, I really, I really hope y'all got y'all y'all notebooks out, man. 
because players got to hear that, man. Like, again, Reese, I, I talked to you a little bit outside. But I was telling you how crazy I see the high school game now because mm-hmm. I was just in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of kids that's on a real hot horse right now. And just like you just mentioned, as fast as you can go up is as fast as you can get knocked off of it. Mm-hmm. What would you say, like, would you, what would you give to the players today that you wish somebody could have told you when you was coming up? After everything you've been through, what would you say is the most key thing about the grind as far as, like, putting keeping one foot in front of the other? What would you give to a young player coming up today? That's really trying to be Tyrese Rice. Um, I would tell him to soak up the game. Um, soak up the game from as many people as possible. Uh, especially nowadays, they resources your resource is unlimited. Mm. Like you can get in front of anybody at any time, get in contact with yeah. anybody at any time. I would tell them to soak in their resources mm. and gain the knowledge and be receptive um, to constructive criticism. Like they can't, like I think a lot of young dudes now they can't really take criticism, but we also got to understand how to give it. Um, at the same time, we can't just be like, oh, he he, he soft because he can't take this. Like, no, nah, you probably just got to say it in a different way. Mm-hmm. Like, he going to understand you. You just got to get it off a little bit differently. Um, but I would tell a young dude to be able to be able to be receptive to that criticism and soak up the game. Man. But do you ask think questions. that's possible? You think that's possible? The reason I'm about to ask you this question is with social media, they got thousands of people telling them how good they are. So when you keep it real with them, stat, we talk about this all the time. Like mm-hmm. nowadays, the clown world that we live in today, being real is foreign. You hating? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's fact. Being real is you hating. So like, mm-hmm. I saw it again firsthand. These are kids now that's playing in the game. Maybe they don't do so well in real time, but they got a crazy highlight, and then they got four thousand people looking at their shit. The first. 30 minutes they post it. And then you yeah. come to them and be like, hey, we need to work on this, this, and this. Do you even think that's possible because their minds are somewhere totally different? With some of the young dudes. Some okay. of them. Some of them, I think, you know, they kind of lost. I yeah. mean, I think it's... But, again, I don't think it's their fault. Yeah. Like, a lot of the stuff that's with the young dudes, I, I don't totally blame young dudes because it's got to come from somewhere. Like, that had to be built in your core. Like somebody had to be putting that in you or somebody wasn't keeping you grounded enough. Yeah. Like yeah. somebody somebody got to give you the understanding, but it's got to happen early. It can't happen after he already done he 500,000 people on the gram. Yeah. Everybody doing this. He out at the studio with Uzi. Yeah. You, it, like all like it's how you going to bring her back down now? Yeah. It's a 17 year old. Imagine if we were 17 with all them resources. Who who? Gonna tell you what, like you know what I'm saying? Like so, yeah, it's like right. it's gotta happen early, yeah, very very early. I'm talking, but like, see those those coaches and those people that we had around us, young that was doing it right, that was doing it for free, mm-hmm. that was out here really grinding, like that don't exist no more. Yeah, the money tied to it's it. It's always now. about something. Mm-hmm. So now the kids know it's about something, mm-hmm. and they learn about that early because they coaches is acting like it's about something. So now when they turn to be 16, 17 years old and money stuff start really coming around, they understand that it's already, they think it's already always about something else. Mm-hmm. And it's never, uh, it's never the, the basis of, I just want to go and hoop. Yep. Now it's about what, what can I do to maximize on, of course, the money, but then the people that you just said that was coming up with us, that was focused on giving up like stuff for free, being back in the community. They saying, how can I get money off of this dude? Like, how can I market him enough that he gets money and then it comes to me? Like, it's always a motive now. It's not like I really care about this person. I care about this person because I know that they can make me money. And we see a lot of kids fall like that, man. And it's unfortunate because you were blessed with the opportunity to see both sides for sure. Mm -hmm. Because you you reached high, high mountains. So you understand how that feels. So when you see a kid now who's at a high mountain, you can relate to him. And you yeah. can relate to all the people who trying to make it because that's how you had to yeah. get it too. So like you can, you can see both sides of the spectrum. So mm-hmm. I say all that to say transition into you have a hell of a career at BC and then draft night comes. Mm-hmm. 
what's going through your mind? Like, is it I'm I'm going to get drafted? Did you have doubts? How did you feel on draft night? Um, I thought I was gonna get drafted. Um, I thought I had done shit, I thought I had done more than enough uh in college yeah. to get drafted. Um so on draft night, but I was you know, I was chilling. I had my family there. No, I ain't had no bunch of people come over and all that. Just my people. It's like my people that's usually at my crib that would or that would be at my crib for something like that. They was there. Um but I knew early. I knew early in the draft. Mm. When I saw how like the first fifteen picks went, I was like, Oh nah. I don't think this is gonna happen today. That's just what I thought. That was just the the thought off the top of my head because of like seven guards going early. The only pick that was that I was told that would be probably mine would be Utah. Utah was Utah had the thirty seventh. But a bunch of guards went early, so they knew stuff was they knew it was about to get weird. Yeah. And they ended up they took Mayna at like twenty three. Mm. So they switched. They were supposed to take a guard with the late one, but they thought he was gonna be gone already. Mm. And they took him with at twenty three. I think it was twenty three, something like that. Yeah. It was like twenty three and thirty seven. They had two picks that year. Twenty three and thirty seven or twenty two and yeah. 40. It was something yeah. like that. Somewhere around that. So I knew early though. Well, knew what early. would you say? Um Cause I think even like just for everybody who playing basketball coming up, like everything you've done, whether you made it to the league or not, it's, it's, it's respected. So like, and I know part of it was you making a decision to not go to that level at a certain point, but like, what, what do you think was the reason that it didn't work out the way you thought it would as far as the NBA? I don't know. I couldn't. I really don't know. Um, I think it was a lot of misperceptions out there early, um, especially like coming up through college. Like I had got suspended twice. Um, we had like Steve Nash camp and all the score gang dudes that came up there to watch me. Like they pulled up much of big car. You know, like you know what they was on. Mm -hmm. um, I think like that played a part. Um, maybe they thought that I was bad or, you know, mm. wh whatever they thought. Um, I think it was a little bit of that. And then it got to a space where after I was already a pro, they couldn't offer me the, the money. Like, it, you couldn't – they was going to have to really offer me, like, a good amount of money for me to leave the money that I was oh, making yeah, for sure. in the situation that I was in. I was in a situation where I was good. Like, I was – I could go and be the one, two, or three option – on whatever team I was in a dope city yep. like I was living fine like everything was cool my family was cool everything was good why would I leave to have to fight for a, a Tim spot yep for a dude that's undrafted on a team that probably gonna play me in the beginning then probably not play me then play me again and then potentially cut me mm -hmm. you don't want to guarantee me two years if they don't want to guarantee me two years then I can't go like, and it's crazy, man, not to cut you off. It's crazy that you telling this right now and, and talking about this because I didn't know that from you. But instead, you can attest to this. I used to go to bat for Tyrese, like on little dudes not understanding who you were. I would bring that up and they'd be like, well, he's not in the NBA because that's all they, they really care about, right? And I'm like, yo, he can go if he wants to, but why would he lead the situation? He's he the man over there. He probably got billboards up. Why would he go fight? Cause I know David Black was your coach at one year, mm -hmm. and when he went to Cleveland, I said I know they had a conversation. He probably wanted Ty to come with him. Nah, oh. I didn't fuck with him like that. Oh, damn! damn. <laughs> <laughs> but in my head again, not knowing that, I'm thinking like, oh yeah, like that could have been an easy opportunity he make for that him. Phone call. Yeah, but yeah. but I mean, even my people were saying that they thought that it was they thought that too. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> we we got a lot of respect for each other. Yeah, a lot of respect for each other as you know, as a coach. As a you know, as a mindset, as a winner, but like we nah, I wasn't like that. But I wanted, to, yeah, that's 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 crazy. Now, now I'm like, man, I, I argue I with like, like fifty nah, people saying be, that. It's, but it's all good. Nah, real um, um, it's crazy because you were already in the you know couple minutes we already been talking. You already um, put yourself in a different category because think about in today's game, you got guys who didn't do half the stuff that you did in college. They still gonna have a draft party. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, it don't make sense because it's a social media thing now. Mm-hmm. You got to let people know who they're draft night. And it's messed up because if, if they put it on the story, you know he didn't get drafted because at the end of the story, you don't know what happens. Yep. Man, I, man, I pulled up to a spot one time. They had the whole spot set up. Whole spot set up for cuz all. Nothing. Nah. And, and it's crazy because, and again, like, I say that to say, come on, man. you had the regular people in your crib. All, like, it was ready. Come on. But look, the crazy thing is, and, the, you know, you saying that again, you had everybody that was already going to be at your crib at your crib. And you had a hell Indeed. of a career. So, like, it, oh, it don't make sense. Like, people didn't do half the stuff he did and have a whole, a whole section or a whole club rented out. It don't make no sense. But that, again, goes back to today's game. That that also go back to just I mean that's that ain't just today's game either like that's dudes is really out here doing that like that's you know some people just like that yeah um and then if you're really paying attention to dudes just like that that's always got a bunch of different people around them something always happen mm-hmm. something always happen when dudes got this group of friends over here this group of friends over here this group over here you got a bunch of dudes that you ain't never seen them with when they came up. Like the dudes that you see me with now is the same dudes yeah. that I came up with as like a six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old. The yeah. exact same. Like yep. since then, like my family always been with me. Like that's always been a thing because they the ones that's gonna keep you grounded. Like them dudes don't give a fuck that I'm that I done did whatever the hell I done did. Like they love it. Yeah. You know, they love it. But if I do something whack, they're gonna be like, Hey bro, like <laughs> <laughs> you whack, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, like yeah. that's how it's gonna be. But yeah. like, that's the thing. A lot of these, a lot of these dudes, they don't have that. They got all these different yes people around them. They done got to the league or whatever. They done got some bread and they done start doing this and that mm-hmm. at this and that party. Now you hanging out with this and this person, mm-hmm. and then a crash down happened. And who you leaning on? You got to go back to, to the dark ground. Space. Yeah, go to that dark yep. space, and and a lot of motherfuckers don't make it out. We talk about that a lot. All the time. Was all that your time. first when you when you didn't? When the draft didn't happen, you didn't get drafted. Did you go into a dark space mentally? Nah, I didn't. I was embarrassed though. I didn't. I definitely was embarrassed. Um, I can't say that because I'm like, damn. Like, what? Like, what else was I supposed to do? Like, how I'm supposed to? How I'm supposed to go here and, and go and kick it there? I, I talked about this on my live. How we had a, I had a pro am game like two days later, mm-hmm. and it like forced me to to go out there and be in front of people because, you know, John Marshall Pro-Am, at this time, it's jumping. It's up. Yeah. It's up. Six, seven, and eight, every game is up. Like, it's hella Standing people room there. only, They're for on real. Bike. Standing room only. It's hot as a bitch. Yep. There's summertime, food truck outside, people, yep. you know, it's a, it's a thing. Yeah. Like, we, we look forward to this on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is fun. So it forced me to be around, like, the love that kind of like pushed me to that point. Mm. And it and it took for a dude yelling something at me in the stands for me to for it for me to click like, damn, like you still got love out here. Like yeah. they still know who you yeah. are. Like they like not that I felt like I needed like validation, but I needed that to keep me motivated. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it like it wasn't that I was gonna quit because I wasn't gonna do that. Mm-hmm. But in that particular moment, it gave me a boost. Like I feel like we we all gonna need some kind of boost at some point. Like somebody gonna somebody gonna say something that's gonna put a battery in your back. Yep. Whether it's something at a game or in a situation like that, or a dude that you just walk past on the sidewalk and you just heard him say some shit and it's yep. like, oh shit, like damn that shit clicked. Like actually that do make sense, bro. I so see. you know you can have them them situations that put you over the top or that give you that nudge. Like nah, go ahead, nigga, you okay? For sure. You know what I'm saying? You need that. I say that all the time. It's like exactly what you just said about walking past. It'll be a group of people talking. You'll walk past, and for some reason, a voice gets loud, and you're yeah. supposed to hear some shit that clicking you. Like, it's that crazy. So the opposite side of that is today's game. Like, you talk about some kids, they got all these fake people around them. So on draft night, for example, if they don't get drafted, the people that was fake around them are going to take the battery out they back. They're going to be like, man, give me this back, back. I mean, this battery back. I'm good. Yeah. They're going to go to their programs, and people really not going to even be looking at the like looking their way no more. You had the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. So that's cool that you can touch on that because that solidified you knew I really was who I was and people still love me regardless of the of the situation about getting Correct. drafted. Correct. Um so I just again that's crazy to really think about that now because in my head outside looking in, you like, damn Reese ain't get drafted. Where is he mentally? Mm-hmm. And then after that you took off from there. 
Like, yeah. I mean, you took people, off. It, when you're on the outside looking at it, any situation, it's hard to really have, like, understanding. Yeah. Like, you, you can see it, and he was like, damn, like, that's crazy right there. Like, I was looking at uh, Tyson Fury was doing an interview talking about uh, the Wilder fight the first time. Mm -hmm. His daughter had died. And he was talking about he wasn't focused. Like all this shit or whatever, his daughter had died right before the fight, like a like a month before the fight. Mm. Nobody knew that about it. That was his first time even talking about it. Mm. And I'm saying like you just don't even know. Yeah. You know you don't know what's going on. You know with people, what's going to motivate them? Yep. You know the next time or hold them back. Yep. And I think that kind of that was one of them things that that held them back then. But it's an extreme thing. Mm -hmm. So now you know, you're else. your first footsteps. Um, Across the water, man. You you step foot in a pro arena now. What are you thinking? Like, are you thinking like, yo, is it foreign territory? Because again, it's already foreign territory because you're not in the states no more. And a lot of guys don't understand how hard that is to go somewhere else and mentally be locked in. You away from your family. You probably don't know the language. Just the perception of playing overseas. And I mean, I don't know if this applies to you, but like you being Tyrese Rice, like. Really, like, what was going through your head? That's what I'm saying. Like, what's you're overseas now, and it's G talked about this. Like, it's dudes that say they going overseas, but like that situation ain't your situation. Yeah. So, no, nah, it'd be totally different. What? Yeah. What? What was? What was your mind state walking into that for the first time? Man, my, <laughs> I walk when I when I put up to the gym. I'm like. <laughs> What the fuck going on over here? <laughs> like, like, what, like, what, like, what, like, like, what, like, what we doing here? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, like, it's like we, we about to play in here? Like, nah, like this, yeah. this is the locker room right here. <laughs> so you telling me that we all just sitting on a bench right here, hanging out, shit, over here, like, and, and that's it. Trenches. Like, <laughs> it's how we rocking. Yeah, like, yeah. All right, cuz. <laughs> Let's rock. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man, what, you, yeah. what you gonna do? That's Shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what you gonna do? But, like, and I, it really had me, like, like, this the gym. Like, I wish I had a picture. Yeah. I'm gonna send my find a picture. And send Where were you at? Where was, I was the at Athens. I, I was okay. at I played in, in the Greek League my first year. Uh, we were supposed to be in Euro League, actually, but they had some, um, they owed some people some bread. And they had a um they had a court case out a FIBA case out against them, and when you got a FIBA case out, you can't pay and you can't play in European competition until you pay that bread. So they want to even think about getting y'all no new gym or nothing. Hell no, nah, they said, man, this is what we got. So <laughs> they moved us right. So the gym that we was playing in is where they had played. Um, they had like some of the Olympic games there. Okay. Um, at one point, big ass gym, huge. Yeah, they moved us to the old gym because of that. Because they wasn't getting that Man. money from Euro League to rent the gym out and had that space, so they put us in the old gym that we were supposed to just be practicing in. I'm talking like <laughs> I can't even really. I, I'm they got Fallen Creek. <laughs> no, 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 niggas think I'm playing. We like a John Marshall. No, yeah. I, ain't play, I ain't playing with John That's Marshall. Crazy. Yeah, I believe, John Marshall. I believe you. Like it's dead John Marshall in there. Like the, yeah. the seats, like just as high. Like, God. like we it's, we had John Marshall, but the niggas making a million dollars. No, like a nigga making a million dollars in here. Like it's somebody in here that make a million dollars. Yeah, like it yeah. wasn't me. Like not me. Not yeah, not my, yeah. not my uh, first year. Like hell not. Nah, but it's a nigga in here that make a million dollars and he playing in. Did you ever have doubts when you were, when you first walk into that? Is there any doubt in your mind? Like, damn, is this really what I want to be doing? Or did you nah, say, I'm, I'm going to be here. I, I don't nah, care. Um, I'm always embraced the journey. Um, I always had to overcome situations. Like I always had to prove that I was worthy or prove that I was good enough or prove that, you know, I should be mentioned with, you know, whoever. Yeah. So, like, it wasn't really a thing for me when I got in that situation. It's like, well, I got to figure this shit out. Like, in my mind at first, I was like, I'm going to go over here and average a dub. I'm going to come back to the league. Mm -hmm. Everything going to be cool. I'm good. Nah, it don't go like that. Yeah. It don't go like that. Damn. Like, it's real hoopers over there. Mm -hmm. Like, you go over there and get fried. Like, you will see, like, it's a reason why a lot of dudes that play the league, they go over there and they get sent home. Mm. Or they go over there and they struggle yeah. because you don't believe that niggas can really hoop. You don't understand that that game is totally different. different. Mm -hmm. 
that game is different from any other game that's played anywhere. Yeah. yeah. But it, and what's what's dope about that that the way that I'm what I'm hearing and and just even talking to you like you said embrace the journey you also understand the level of play regardless of what it looked like right you understand the level of play there you seen dudes who was in the league come over there and it all comes back to what we're here to do and what we talked about is self awareness and it's like you can't really truly embrace the journey without being self aware and. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's take it back to the beginning in terms of what the point I'm trying to make is like your 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 bloodline came from hooping. Mm-hmm. So your self awareness when it came to basketball, like everything that you it did to it. embrace the journey went back to like it's about basketball and it's about what is what what really matters. Because we talk about the game today, it's a lot of shit that's important that don't really matter, but it's also a new generation and so it's like it's a give and take, man. But I think what's dope about what you're, what you're saying is that, you know, regardless of, cause it's always been a different stigma on going overseas and regardless oh, of all dude. of that, you went into that situation still embracing your journey. And I was early in your, in your pro career overseas. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, for the guys listening, like really understand that, like embracing the journey. Cause we talk about the transfer portal a lot, like, mm. and I'm not sitting here saying I'm knocking it, but like, no, it definitely it it definitely makes, I think the mindset weaker. Yeah, Man, I, I think that transfer portal is like that because I'm not gonna say that this is just the reason, but young dudes, they're never not the best player in the gym. Mm. Like when they're young, they don't like when we was young. When I was young, I played against like Luke Mon, Corey Alexander, Ben Wallace, some Hoopers, Tyreek Wallace. Fastberry, like I was not, I wasn't probably the fifteenth best hooper mm. in that gym. Yeah. So you gotta learn how to, you gotta learn how to stay on the floor. You gotta learn how to earn respect. You gotta learn like all these things, and you gotta do it from the ground because they're not gonna put you on the floor. Young dudes now they don't go to open gyms with all the old heads at because they be mad because they can't play. play. Yeah, like so now when you get in a situation. Where, okay, you was a nice one all through high school. Now we in college now. It's like 12 U's on the team. How you going to figure out how to get on the court? How you going to figure out how to get on the court? Like, they don't really, they like, that's the part that, that's what I mean by a lot of stuff don't be their fault. Yeah. They don't be their fault. Like, I always thought the Imani Bates kid mm. should just go, go play pro. Mm. Should go to college for what? Go go play in Europe for a year or two and go see if you really, yeah, like things like that, yeah, like or like other dudes who's supposed to be elite at fifteen, like why are you still playing fifteen and under? Yep. And, like, and talk why about are you that a little still more, playing bro? Like, because well, we talked about this earlier, like for, for the game that it is today, we understand it's different than, than when you was coming up, right? But we understand there's still that problem of like. I mean, you see guys that they going to sign the Duke if they got Duke just because it's Duke. And they're not yeah. necessarily looking at the yeah. things that factor into that. And so, you know, kind of share your perspective on that because I, I love what you were talking about in terms of, like, you – you. I mean, the conversation we had, we talked about a few different players, but you're able to really look at a person's journey and say and, – and, and see them in their element and be like, that's probably not the right move. They should do this. And whether they did it or not, like – it played out exactly how you said it. And I think your journey speaks for that because you you didn't, I ain't gonna say your journey was perfect, but you was yeah. able to make those decisions. So yeah. so speak on that perspective a little bit. Um, I think just the experience. Mm-hmm. Like you, you go through the experience, you you play at different gyms, you play against different people, you see different personalities. This dude from Baltimore, he more like this. This dude from Jersey, he more like this. He from Philly, he played like, like you. Mm-hmm. You start to understand people. And then... Even more so, where you from? Like you, you understand people's personalities, um, the side of town stuff they from. Like who brought them up? Like who was they playing against coming up? Like you, you can kind of get a feel for all of that, and then factor in them getting ready to go to a school somewhere. Um, we talked about a few guys uh, from the crib, like that got in situations where it was like, damn, maybe you shouldn't go to this situation because this not really for you. Or you see another dude that 
you thought that situation was for him, but he got it in him. Mm. He got it in him. So it's like, oh, nah, that might not be the situation for him, but he probably going to figure it out. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah. Or he didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you see the other guy that didn't, that might have had them more time. So it's like, some dudes, you can have conversation with them. You can see them in the gym settings. You can see how they interact on the basketball court. You can see how they play against dudes that's older than them. You can see how they play against dudes that's younger than them. Mm-hmm. If they trying to big dog them yep. and all of that, it's like, hold, hold on, my boy. Yep. You supposed to be like that. You supposed to do that to him. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to kill you. You you younger than me. I'm supposed yep. to. Yeah. I got to do him like that. Yep. He the one I ain't supposed to kill. I got to go get him. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a mindset, and everybody don't have that. Everybody don't want to embrace that. Yeah. Or everybody brings that out in different situations. So some schools aren't. Made like some dudes don't need to go mess with Bill Self. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. maybe you need to go mess with Rick Barnes. Yeah. Rick Barnes more offense. He's gonna let you kind of play Bill Self. Gonna make you play defense. Yeah. So you might want to think about you know the small things like that. Rick Barnes more laid back. Bill Self gonna get on your ass. Mm-hmm. If your attitude, if you don't respond to people yelling at you and stuff like that, you probably shouldn't go to Kansas. Yeah. You probably shouldn't go to Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You probably so, shouldn't go mess with uh, yeah. Rick Pitino. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you, you probably shouldn't go mess with them. Yeah. Because they going to get on your ass. Yeah. You might want to go go mess with, you know, you might want to go mess with Shaka. Shaka, a great dude. He's going he yep. to get on you, but it's going to come from a great place. You know, yep. you're you going to feel good coach. about that. Players you coach. You're going to feel good situation. about that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, people got to, young dudes got to think about that. And that's one of the things that I've always been able to kind of pinpoint about dudes. Yeah. Like, I can look and be like, mm. Is there is there a young guy right now that that you can look at um, and be like, yo, that's that was me. Like he he really wanted. Is there a particular young guy that you know in today's game that you like, yo, that's him? It's a young dude. It's a young boy out in Houston. It's a young boy out in Houston, lefty. He like that too. He gonna go somewhere. Mm. He gonna go somewhere and hoop. His name Fred Payne. Okay. Is he in high school right he now? In high school. Okay. Yeah, he in high school. He a senior. He from. Um, he from Louisiana, okay. Mm. But he he live out. He go to the um the little legacy school out in Houston, right down the street from me. Damn. Um, but I went and watched him practice uh, the other day, a couple of days ago. I'm gonna go check him out on Friday. He just got it. Like he, mm. I watched him practice for about 45 minutes. But obviously, I knew the skill and everything's there. I seen him play before. I seen yeah. his highlights. He 35 and six. Like he he mm. gonna do. He he get to it. Mm. But when I watch him practice. And I look at how his teammates respond to him. I look at how he responds to his teammates. I look at how he challenges his teammates without saying a word. I look how he lead his teammates without saying a word, and they just behind him. And it's like, mm, that's, that's amazing. something. That's I don't know what that is, but he got something. Mm. He got that. He, it's in him to get through whatever the situation is. Mm. I can tell. You know what I'm saying? Like I can tell he going to look down at it and be like, well, he gonna have to show me. Yeah, you know, and like that was me. Like I was always, you like that? Yeah, show me. Here you go. Yeah, come on. I think let's too, see. Touching, uh, wrapping up on the transfer portal thing. How my mindset um, thinks about the transfer portal is, like we always say, dudes don't want to fight for none no more because mm-hmm. now I'm a big dog in high school. Like you said, really, the big dogs in high school, and Zion is a bad example. I used to hate seeing Zion highlights because it was dunking on five, eight, five, nine white dudes. I'm like, yo, why don't you go to Oak Hill where you playing against a top team every night, right? Yeah. But then Zion went to Duke and did the same thing, and he in the league doing the same thing. That's why it's a bad example. <laughs> I was about to like, say, you thought he wasn't no, going to no, no, do no, 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 no. Oh, saying, I'm I'm saying, saying, that, that was a bad example, man, but what I'm saying is. 285 pounds. Yeah. Was, <laughs> he was, he was going to do that. But like, well, what I'm saying do is the dude that I wanted to reference was Seven Woods. I don't know if you remember Seven Woods. I remember Seven Woods. Yeah. In middle school, he going crazy, but crazy. the dudes, like I said again, not to knock on, you know, but they slow white dudes that don't look athletic or nothing. He just getting steals at half court doing the same dunk. But they look fire because he in middle school. Yeah. But he, and, and what you just said, Reese, is why don't you go somewhere where you're going to have to challenge people to do that? Like, mm-hmm. really, let me see where you is. And his example, unfortunately, he went to UNC and then he didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Then he left UNC and went to South Carolina. He still didn't know how to do it. Now he at Morgan State. I don't know if you knew that. He left him with the Morgan State. Yeah, Morgan I knew State. He was now. in South Carolina. Yeah, Morgan State now. 
But the thing about that is, is that. But that's the mindset is what he just said about he never had to challenge anybody. So when you get right. put in that position, the ball get rolled out. But whoever picking it up is you. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to fight. Transfer mm-hmm. portal allows them to be like, I can go see my options. I don't really like the situation. Let me go somewhere else. But How are you thing, able to go to three schools? The thing about that, though, is that because when we tie it back to everything that we're trying to do here with this platform, it's about self-awareness. Like, that's a situation that's going to put you in that situation where you hit a wall and you got it. You just hit you. You're not trying to hit the wall because you want to be perfect. Like, you want to hit the wall because you want to see how am I going to respond to this? And the way you respond to it, like you talking about with guys going into different situations, you need to be real with yourself and you need to surround yourself with people that's going to be real with you about what that looked like. Hey, man, this happened. Mm-hmm. This is how you responded. I ain't trying to knock you, but, like, mm-hmm. if you're thinking about doing this, maybe we should go this route because it's best for you. But because people have that ulterior motive, it don't it don't really work out like that. That shit lonely. Yeah. Like, that's lonely. Like, going, like, really tapping in and, and really trying to get to the root of – you know, what's going on with you or how you going to get through things or, like, how you going to deal with adversity, adversity and everything like that, that self-awareness, that part of self-awareness, that shit is lonely. Yeah. Everybody's not trying to go through that yeah. because you start feeling emotions that you never that thought you never that you were going to feel. Yeah. Like, you didn't even know that shit was there. Yeah. Like, you sitting there by, by yourself watching something, man, you done, like, you chilling, and you start feeling emotion about something, you like, damn, like, what the fuck? Like, you try to run from it. it. Like, I'm over here watching Mike Jordan highlights. What the hell? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. But, like, that's a lonely feeling, like, to try to get to the bottom of that. Everybody not trying to get to the bottom of that. They're going to use a distraction. They're going to use a distraction. And if you use a distraction, then you're never going to know. Yep. And you're never going to be able to bridge the gap between you and another relationship. Because if you can't, if you're not self-aware, then you can't be, you can't be socially aware. Yep. It's not possible. And the self-awareness piece, like you just said, too, was people don't want to sit in that. Because, like you said, it is lonely. So... I run away from it. But then mm-hmm. when you run away from it, you're really running away from you being self-aware find you of yourself. Yeah. It's, it's going to find you, but the way that you're, what you're running from is what you need to be sitting in and facing. Because that's when you're going to learn about yourself. Yeah, because if not, you go overcompensate. That's what, that's when self-awareness kicks in because mm-hmm. now you really only got you, you, and you. Yep. And it's like, who who am I at that point? When you run away from it so much, you really never know who you are. That's what we always talk about all the time. Guys are get. Guys will be playing basketball and then they get to an age of in their mid thirties and they still don't know who they are because the game was their escape because they really didn't have to think about who really am I besides this basketball player. Yeah. So that's when self awareness really kicks in. So that's that's key that you say that because one dude I wanted to mention, which I have so much respect for because of what he did, and he really was self aware at a young age was Lamelo. Yeah. Like Lamelo mm-hmm. Ball, like. At first, I ain't gonna lie, when I was watching his highlights and he won't, he was just cherry picking, I'm like, oh man, what? Then he really took on, nah, I'm really this dude and challenged himself. Cause I know he didn't, I know he didn't just go somewhere just to say, let me go somewhere where it's gonna be easy. The league he was playing in was tough. Mm-hmm. That that Australian league was tough. Oh, and he had, you have to be self aware to put yourself in situations like that at a young age. To bet on yourself, you gotta, I mean, we talked about that earlier as well. Like, mm-hmm. For Lamelo to do that, he really had to believe in who he was and 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 bet on himself. And we talked about this as well. Like a lot of times with players, when they have those yes men around them, or even if it's their parents, you know, even with you dealing with the AAU situation, like you have parents that want to take their kid out of a situation. And you know, I understand you want the best for your kids or whatever, but like a lot of times, them parents won't really. I mean, they they kind of living through that kid and. And one thing that we mm-hmm. talked about is like, y'all ain't never gonna knock a player for wanting to leave y'all team and do something else. But you can see what's coming, and it's like, regardless of what happened, you are gonna let them make that decision. And we gotta help these people understand <laughs> that as a player or as the person who everybody's guessing to, like, make the decision that's best for you because you need to understand you gotta take accountability for that. We got too many people that. Because they got those people around them, they let them dictate their decisions. And again, it's it's not all the way their fault, but it gets mm-hmm. to a point where when they have to take accountability for it, it's like, nah, that person did that, and I and so You've it's been like running from it so long, yep. yeah. And yep. it's like stop, don't run from it. Really ask yourself those hard questions because when somebody come to you and say, hey, this might not be the right situation, and they might be the one person that told you that, and you think they hating, sit there and ask yourself them them real questions because. Regardless of what happened, you got to live with that decision, and you can't you can't point that finger. And I see a lot of that in the game, and, and it's it's unfortunate because you love that dream so much that you don't want to 
really own that it was on you, mm-hmm. you know, at a certain extent. You know, what and I mean? your your the question I wanted to ask you, Reese, about the follow up with the self awareness and what Lamelo did. Like Athens won't your only stop. Like you went, no. you traveled the world, low yeah. key, like for real, and you left an impact on all those places. Would you look back and say you were able to do that because you were self aware with who you were? When I look back at it, knowing what I know now, mm-hmm. I can say that. Okay. Um, in the moment. Like I said, in the moment, I was always, you know, whatever the journey was going to take, I had an agenda. Like, I wanted to go to the league. Yeah. I wanted to do, I just wanted to do whatever it was to try to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I had to play in Europe and put myself in a position to get there through that route, then I was going to play my cards the best I could. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, I was aware of what I wanted. I was aware of who I was. And I never let anybody tell me less of that. Yeah. Like, I stood tall on any situations I believed in. I stood tall on any money situations that I thought I deserved. And I walked away from I walked away from bread if I thought it wasn't what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Like, I walked away from big bread in the COVID. In yeah. the COVID, right after I, we had just played in the, um, I had just played in the bubble. And right after that, the team wanted me. And I told them what I wanted. And they got close. They got real close. But I was like, that's not what I want. Like yeah. this, this is what I want. Mm. I was Sheesh. like, I'm like, and, and people was looking at me like, oh, you turn that down. I'm like, I ain't want that. Yeah. Like so, I'm a, I'm a, I was always aware of what I wanted. I was always aware of what I wanted to be, where I wanted to be, and it was not many things that could stop me. So when I was in it, I would just, you know, I'm flowing with a journey. And that's tough because that's what, that's what self awareness is in yep. a nutshell, though. Because mm-hmm. just hearing you talk about it. When you're not self-aware with yourself, you allow those people to say, you ain't take that, to change what your mindset is of what you value yourself yeah. as. Because anybody, again, like like you said earlier, outside looking in, they look at you like, Reese, why you ain't take that? And you like, because I know who I am and I know what I deserve. Yeah. So that, that, that was tough because a lot of uh, players need to hear that and just people in life in general because people take jobs that they know that they deserve better for, and then they become that robotic mindset that we talk about all the time, the clown world. Mm-hmm. And they like, oh, I'm going to just go to this job because I'm comfortable. And they don't value themselves because they're not self-aware of who they are, so they yeah. take anything. I mean, it, it take that. It take that for sure. And you just got to, you know, you got to believe. You know, if you, you got to believe in, in what you want. You got to believe in the route that's, you know, that, that the energy is taking you. Yeah. Um, And you can't let anything deter you from that. You got to make sure that, you know, to make sure that you're standing on exactly what you, you know, exactly what you want. But you also open to the change that's going to come. Like some change going to come in there somewhere. You got to be open to evolve with that. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to be open to taking that on and, and then being like, all right, well, I made this decision right here. Um, and I'm standing on it because that's the decision I made. But if this decision come again, maybe I might do it a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. You got to be open to that um, because that next situation could put you in a situation that you never could have thought of. Yep. But in that moment, you might have been like, hey, look, nah, this is what I'm doing right now. Because you, that's what that time brought for you. You spoke on that the other day, uh, Stat, about just standing tall and standing firm, like you said, on every decision that you chose to make at that time is because that's what you felt like you needed to do. And you knew yourself enough to be like, nah, this is my decision right now. If it comes up again, maybe I'll make a different one. But as of right now, this is what I'm going to do. So highlighting your overseas career, um, every place you went, you, you won. And you did very, very good at each spot. Was there any time that, like, like was there a bad spot that you had overseas? Because, again, outside looking in, we see good. But was there any decisions or things that could have altered – um, your total overseas career? Um, yeah, shit, decision did in Barcelona. Uh, when I was in Barcelona, that was probably the hardest time of my career mm. uh, from playing, you know, my first year. Played decent. Um, but we didn't win as much as we should have. We lost in the first round. That was – I lost in the first round twice in my career. That was one of the times, three times. In my 12 years, I lost – I made the playoffs every year. I lost in the first round three times, and that was one of them. Um, and that was just rough because coming back after the summer, they decided that they didn't want me to play. They decided they didn't want me. But they didn't give me my release early enough to get out. Um, 
you know, they had some other things going on that they was trying to do, but they just weren't straightforward. You know, had they been forward with me in the beginning, I would have been able to sign a deal to go somewhere else. You know, I'd have been fine. I would have went back to Maccabi, back to Tel Aviv again, which I had that on the deck at the time. Um, and they, you know, they decided they didn't want me to play, so I was there. You know, I was chilling. I had a um, like a crazy conversation with their GM, and I just had to like, like break it down for them. Like, hey, look, I was in Russia at the time before that, before I came to Barcelona, and. I didn't have any outs in my contract, but Barcelona wanted me. In my eyes, Barcelona and Madrid, that's like the Lakers calling you. Mm. It's the same. I mean, if you look at the seven For the sure. seven biggest organizations yeah. in the world, yeah. Barcelona's one of them. Mm-hmm. Like this ain't like this ain't no you gotta go there yeah. they call you. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it had no outs. So what I had to go through to get out of my contract put me in a in a messed up spot with the team in Russia. I had just mm-hmm. signed an extension. I was there for two years. I had signed an extension for two more years. So I was supposed to be there for four years already. And I was only there for two. And mm-hmm. I left after the second one because I ended up, you know, telling them that I didn't want to stay, you know, whatever, whatever. I had to do a whole bunch of stuff. Get to Barcelona, whatever. It don't work out. That's cool with me. I, I'm not one of them guys that, you know, that's going to throw a, a, a pissy party on them yeah. because they didn't want me. Like if, if they didn't want me, they, if I didn't fit their style, then that's cool. I'm gonna go somewhere else. It, it's not no. It wasn't a big deal for me. Um, but they didn't come to me forward in the beginning. Mm-hmm. They waited. They waited intentionally so I couldn't go where I wanted to go, and I ended up losing out on that deal. So I'm having a conversation with the GM, and I'm like, let me break down something for you. You get a call from your dream job. Call it your dream job. Get a call from your dream job. Um, It's a little bit less money than what you was making, but it's still cool. We in Barcelona, like let's we in Spain. Like this is one of the biggest clubs in the world. Yeah. Period. Um, And you get there and everything don't work out. You know it don't work out. It's cool though. You know whatever. But they want you to take less money to leave. Would you do that? And he looked at me and was like, no. Nah. And I looked at him and was like, so why the fuck are you asking me to do that? Yeah. If you wouldn't do it, why are you asking me to do that? Because that's what you're asking me to do. That's real. Hey, why would you ask me to do that? I'm not doing that. So now I had to sit. So I was sitting. I was just in Barcelona chilling. I was flying everywhere. I would go to, I went to London, Paris, Miami, uh, Switzerland, I was flying all over the place every weekend because I wasn't playing. That's tough. <laughs> like I was working, I was working out crazy. I was yeah. getting it in. I was getting it in, but I wasn't playing. Yeah, like that shit was hard. Like I never not play, and I'm watching these niggas lose. I'm watching them lose. And you want to be out there playing? I didn't give a fuck about being out there playing with them. I wanted to go play. Yeah, you know. So at that point, yeah. So. At that point, I was like, look. I'm trying to go hoop now. Like, all right, this shit sitting around for four or five months. That shit was cool. I got my D together, everything fine. But all right, like something got to shake. But I asked my uh, my Spanish agent. And I hit him up one day. They had just lost a, a crazy game to somebody um, that they shouldn't have lost to, though. I was like, hey, let me ask you something. You think that they would sit there and lose before they would call me? And that nigga looked me dead in my face and was like, yeah. I was like, you telling me they would rather lose than call me? Because they only need a point guard. Mm-hmm. They got everything else. They got a two. They got a three, four, whatever you could think of, everything. They don't have a point guard. Then people used to walk around by my crib. My crib was, like, in the middle of the city, like, smack middle, Bay Ray store across the street, like, whatever, big Gaudi house next to it, like, all types of stuff right there. Main tourist attraction. It's three, 400,000 people walking past my crib every day. And people would see me and they knew. They would be like, you here? I'd be like, yeah. He'd be like, why are you not playing? But like, what's going on? Like, why you? They couldn't understand it. They thought I was gone. That's crazy. They didn't know I was there. Like, I was like, nah, I'm, I live right here. You know, y'all know where I live at. That's crazy. I'm here. <laughs> so, wild. like, that was, like, the hardest time that I had to go through. That was, like, one of the hardest things I ever had to go through over there, hooping. Because um, then what, what followed playing. up? You played the next year, right? I left. 
I left in like January or February and went to China mm. and played for like two months. I was out there for like two, three months. How was that you know, experience? Being honestly, I heard China different. was, was is yeah. rough as far as like the lifestyle. Yeah. I was I I was I because I was in Shenzhen and it's close to Hong Kong. It's like an hour and a half away from Hong Kong. Okay. So after the games, after the games, I would just dip mm. and go to Hong Kong. And we had some decent stuff in that city as well. So that's tough. That's just crazy. Just yeah, it's, it's, it's places out yeah, there, man. Man, it's places out there. You can't even. You got a mask up all the time. Like you, like can't leave out the crib because of pollution out there. Like, oh, but, man, that shit, man. And that's too. China that's 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 going into it with the. Um, the mindset piece, bro, because you really love hooping that much where you put yourself in that situation. A lot of guys coming up now, if the situation don't feel right, they 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 out, they bouncing. And I think that goes to um, going back to what we was talking about earlier is like you was, you was already shaped different. Like mm. you being shaped different than the majority of the people that's doing the same thing you're doing you're going to look like how you look right now. You're going to have the stories that you, that you have, the memories that you, because you was always different. Like, mm -hmm. and what I want to speak on next is you've had situations where now that overseas career was you like, ah, I did my thing. Was there any, like what led you to say, I want to stop playing? Like, or do you still want to play? Like, is that something that you still want to do? No, nah, my whole plan was always to stop playing once my son went to high school. Um, once Sean got into ninth grade, I knew I was gonna stop. Like, so I knew that, like early, early. Like, I mean, I had Sean when I was in college, so mm -hmm. I was like, shit. When Sean turned fourteen, it's probably gonna be over for me. Like, I already knew that, so I knew I had an agenda. Like, I used to think like, I want to be making a million dollars a year by this year. I want to be doing this, this, and this by this year, so that then, when he is done, when he out of high school, I'm like. Like, mm. we good. We could kind of just trying to figure out. We can figure it out after that. So I always had that plan, like, young. Like, but then, like, my first two years over there, like, I knew. Mm. So it wasn't really, it wasn't hard for me to stop, especially because I felt like I had given everything I had to the game, especially, like, being over there. Mm. Um, like, could I go back and play? Yeah, I can go back and play right now, for sure, and feel fine. But... How go back and do it? How I use? How I be doing it? How I get in tunnel vision and just be like, look, we coming out here to hoop. Like this is all we doing. I don't want to hear nothing about nothing you got going on over there. Mm -hmm. I don't care nothing about that over there. It's like this right now. If you ain't doing nothing that's within this, we ain't talking about nothing. I couldn't do that right now. Yeah. I know but I can go there right now. It's crazy, y'all, because everybody who's listening, I left this out at the beginning for a reason. Because what I'm about to say next is like. Damn, exactly what he just said. He just he just segued me into this perfect transition. You said you can't do that tunnel vision thing right now, right? You can't lock in. Mm -hmm. George was here. He told not us the hoop, story. Not in hoop. Yeah, yeah, hoop, yeah. hoop, 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 hoop. Yeah. George was here. He told us the insight about how you came to him and was like, TBT is a is an option. All right, and you, for those of you who watch the basketball tournament. Y'all will remember this man. And it probably looked unfamiliar because you was in a Syracuse orange. <laughs> yeah. He went to BC, so he already was with, with the orange niggas. He's with now. the op. <laughs> <laughs> but for those from the city, you you still knew it was Reese because he had the headband. It was perfect, right? It was like this. But that was tunnel vision. So mm -hmm. you were able to lock in and tunnel for a shorter period of time, but it still was around hoop. Mm -hmm. You really don't think if you really say, – say the situation was a little different. You don't think you can do that – Right now, with the whole season being around who? Nah, that shit was six games. <laughs> that shit was six games. I could tap in for six games. Okay, right now. okay, all right. you feel me? I can, <laughs> I can go there. Six games, I can go there. You think of that, like think like. See, this is what niggas always saying. Them three weeks, I wasn't talking to nobody like that during them three weeks. I wasn't really doing was no business in. shit like that during them three weeks. Like yeah. I was doing, I was still in school, so I had my school shit going on, but I was tapped like. I was chilling. Like, nah, it, my girl came out there. I'm chilling. Like, so I'm how going, did the like, orange approach you? We're gonna, we gonna go there. Huh? How did how did how did Syracuse approach? Um they man hit me in the DM. Like, yo, I 
Won't you come play for us? We're gonna, you know, we're gonna do this, this, and this for you. Nah, I'm good, bro. I'm already, you know, I'm straight. I'm on the uh I'm on the um, you know, the ALS team. Yep. You know, my man Sean. I'm good. They come back. Hey, yo, so look, we're gonna do do this and this and this for you. I'm like, hey, look. Come on, yo. Like, look, I don't know. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. So I go back, you know, and I had a conversation with my man. Hey, bro. This is what they saying. Hey, look. I'm not saying that I'm leaving, but I'm not gonna keep turning this down. Like, I can't. Like, you know, that if yeah. he if he do this again, I gotta take that. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't sit on that. And he hit me again, like, yo. Taja hit me. What's crazy it was right before me and Taja's camp. Me and Taja on the phone. We trying to set the camp up. We get the camp shit straight. Yeah, shout, shout out Taja, Taja. Cole, man. That yeah. WNBA deal. Yep. That's major. That's major. You said you was gonna get back in the game and really went and did that. Um. But we having a conversation about the camp. And we get off the phone, and then she sent me a text like, yo, you know this dude? Like, he just hit me on Instagram. He was like, yo, I don't know if you, yo, I, I think you and Reese cool. I seen y'all about to do the camp. We yada, yada, yada. I'm finna give him this, 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 and this. If he come play with us, it had went up again. I said, all right. There it is. That's right. it. <laughs> hey. All right, I ain't, like I, I ain't I no told, fool. Like I said, I'm not gonna keep. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. So you know, I could tap in for six games. And so you did. Yeah. You did. Hold on. You did two two uh, seasons um, of TBT with. Nah, Syracuse. one, one, one and one. Okay, one with ALS, yep. and then so because I the reason why I'm asking is because this is this kind of recent that this came out, but um, they put up I guess the one year you had led in like the most turnovers turnovers. Oh but yeah, I think I had like five turnovers in the first game. Yeah, and, but I only played one game. I so think who, like five what team was that, that on? That was that on was with ALS. ALS. That was ALS. Okay, because then so you came don't back. Don't even be understanding. That was my first time touching a ball, like, and like yeah. since I had came out the season, I'm talking like touching a ball. Yeah, that was the first you time you was done with it before that. I was, yeah, I was done. But even at, even at TBT, I only worked out for like. A week and a half before the yeah, TBT before, started. Yeah, before, because he knew it was six games. Like, like, I only worked out like a week and a half. I went hard like a week and a half. Yeah. Like but your days. first time touching the ball is what he's saying is that joint don't even come back to you the same. So no. that's why. And he only played one game to have no. five turnovers. Because y'all lost the first game, right? We, and we should have won. And we should have won. The coach with Darren Collison, this nigga, got, he got COVID. Mm. Spencer Well, he got COVID. My veil got COVID. Like, we had a bunch of dudes get COVID right before they were supposed to come. So, we was playing the game with, like, nobody. I told Sean before the game, before we even went out there, don't play me 35 minutes because I can't do that right now. Yeah. I have not played basketball. I haven't been in the gym. Mm -hmm. I ain't done no workouts. The workouts that I've been doing is weights, keep my body. I ain't touch no basketball. Yeah. And went out there and did that. My um, stat line was decent, though. Like what was your uh, thoughts on TBT going into that? I mean, like it's like you said, you said it was an option going into you played, you know, for ALS with your guys, but you know their structure. I mean, I'm I'm a fan of. I wish they would apply that Elam ending to a lot of basketball yeah, right now. You know, yeah, what overtime I'm should be Elam ending. It should be Elam ending yeah. straight up. So, what, what's your thoughts on TBT and like what they got going on there? I think it's amazing, yeah. and I think you see the impact of it. Like it, it just. Super dope. Like, I can give you uh, an example. Um, my man Marquez, Marquez Haynes, he does, like, a, a event in Dallas every year. It's called the Urban Legends or whatever, and they and he bring, like, South – it's basically, like, South Urban against North Urban. And, like, bring them all together. It's, like, this big thing. It's dope. It's a bunch of kids outside, bounce houses, food trucks, all that. That's dope. And we got the game, and I'm like, nah, bro, you got to do the Elam ending. I'm like, how hard would that be? To be in the jump, like you got one hood against the other hood, is and it's going to it's yeah. gonna end it's on, a, end on yeah. a buzzer beater. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man, it's yeah. gonna go crazy. I wish crazy. I could show you the video on my phone when they hit the joint. Man, yeah. they hit the joint, it went nuts in the gym. But like that's the effect that the element has. That's tough. It's got that feeling of every like every game you ended on a game winner. That's extreme. Yeah, that's the excitement. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people going really tune in to that, and guys on the court, you can be up. Six or seven, but when you hit that joint, it's still like, yep. 
Nigga, we out of here. Yep, you know, yeah. it's like open gym. Like yep. you hit a joint at open gym. Like nigga, it's a, get your ass up the. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a high it's reaction every time. Yeah, Whoever so wins, I think it's is extreme. And then especially for like, especially for the situations when the team come back from something crazy. Yep. Like when we was out there for the um, this is with Q's this summer. The was it the um, Peoria team? They was down twelve. In the Elam ending, the team had to score two points to win. All they needed was a lay. They was down by 12. They needed a lay. There were people. I know they was going. They Ooh. lost the game on the uncontested layups. 14 0 run. I'm talking like nobody, get, but it wasn't even like it just happened in a row. Mm-hmm. They went like 15 possessions Damn. without scoring. Like, and hit a free throw within all that. Hit a free throw, got it to one. Yeah. Oh damn. They ain't have no DLC. closers on that team. God damn. Somebody got to step up. Come on, yo. You can't give me two. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Somebody got it. Somebody. For everybody sure. can't you be can't out that You can't give me two shaking. and fifteen possessions. I would get you. I could get two and fifteen possessions in the league right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Against Kawhi. Yeah. Like, like, like I'm right. talking like against yo, Weber, at like two. Two. Yo, yeah. Come on. I'm going to get two. Yeah. Like, There's two things I want to touch on right now. <laughs> One thing is definitely for him because you said this on your live. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, this. yes. I'm about to get your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said this on your live. Um, no, 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 no. I think he said it on. Yeah, he did. Him and Jack was on live a couple weeks ago. I'm listening to the jump. He always used to get on me about like, bro, shoot the ball, bro. You, can, bro, you can score 30. Just shoot the ball. And I'm like, bro, it's not about that, right? Because I'm a point guard too. So like. Getting other people involved, that's exciting for me as well. But he he just never understand that because he like, I know you can score. Why are you not trying to score every time? <laughs> you literally <laughs> said, you was like, yo, listen, like, I can score seven in a row anytime I want to. I understand that. I have the ball in my hand. I can make that quick seven easy. Mm-hmm. Can you please explain to him coming from a point guard? He explained it to me earlier, but oh, for, perfect. <laughs> okay. But but for the for the for the podcast, yeah. you can get it to them. But he please. he. Please but, give it to them. But before you explain it, let me just give a disclaimer. Because, again, when we talk about our journey, it was always about confidence with him. And yeah. so if he wasn't out there scoring yeah. and he yeah. was getting everybody involved, and if they weren't executing, it took away from even more of his confidence because now it's like, dang, should I have done more? Should I? Have? So that was where that was coming from. But at the same time, yes, you you made a great point. So explain that for the for the yeah. people because it's, it's a great mindset to have being a scoring guard. I think a lot of guys who play – need to really understand what you're about to say right now. Um, as it pertains to, like, being that, being that scoring guard, you got the ball in your hands all game long. You got to, like, really break down the game to, you know, to understand. Let's say, what, you want to get 20, that's five a quarter. Mm. If you got the ball all game, you should be able to get a three in the later. Easy. You should be able to get a three in the lane. Shut up. <laughs> no, no, for real, it's easy. I got you. I got like, you know, <laughs> and you're going to sprinkle in some free throws. He's about to have, he about to have like, a good time with this. On, but that's I'm, also. I'm that shit right now. But, like, that's, <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's also. That also is a reason for you not to go out there and try to do too much. Like, you don't have to go out there and do too much. Like, I'm going to come out some games and in the whole quarter, I might not even look at the basket. I might just run around and pass the ball the whole time. Like even my teammates looking like, even they confused. Like you ain't gonna shoot. Yeah. Like you gonna shoot. I'm like, uh, I'm gonna shoot. Yeah. Like, but I know when and then in, in four possessions, they gonna score eight points. Like, oh, all right. And then I go out there and do it all over again. And then three page three trade possession is bing 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 another six. <laughs> like you got fourteen and you really only went for four minutes. You've been on the court for. 12 minutes, but you've been on go for four. Like, it, like you don't have to be on go the entire time sure. because if you really break down the game and you play 30 minutes a game, you played 30 minutes. How many of those minutes would you score? Mm-hmm. You probably scored. If you break it all the way down, you probably scored for three and a half minutes, four and a half minutes, really of, like, real, like, scoring offense. Like, oh, he went right here. You attacked right here. You shot the ball right here. Like, yeah. when you really break that down, so – why you need to be on go for 30 minutes? Because when you don't go for 30 minutes, <laughs> I love you're just forcing. Right you know, it's like you're forcing, but you're not, you're not letting it, you're not letting it come to you in a way that you believe that you're a scorer. Yep. Like, it's one thing to believe that you're a scorer and be like, nah, I could go out there and get six straight in, in a minute and a half, two minutes sure. or whatever. But it's a whole other thing to be like, 
I just go out there and just score when I want to. And then you start forcing. Yep. Like you still gotta stay in the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 I love this. Yo, I love this hey, shit man. right there, though. Look, listen, listen, let me hold on. Hold on, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go real quick. Let me go real quick. No, 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 no. Let you go. No, 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 no. I got something to say. I'm going to just say this one thing real quick, and then you can say whatever you want to say. I've been doing dudes my whole life. The thing that's different about what you're saying, and again, guys, take notes on what Risha said. It's very important. Like, I think a lot of guys misunderstand what it means to be a scorer in basketball, period. So understand what he's saying is exactly what you need to have the mindset of. But with somebody like Deuce and, and the confidence that you had coming up, it's like when you're talking about letting the game come to you, it's like you on the scouting report. So really it's you calculated in your movements where it's like I'm doing it because I understand it's going to open up for me at some point. And when it does open up for me, I can notice it and I'm, I'm going to make a conscious decision. I'm not thinking twice about it. Right. The difference in what I'm saying to him was – Always seeing him play was he thought twice about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me, let me unless go ahead. he had those certain games where we'd be like, bro, why you not doing right, that? Look, every time? That's where that yeah. came from. I let him, you know I mean? let him get. I had, off, I right? had dudes, I had dudes. I, mean, I ain't mean to cut you off, no, but you I had dudes that that we used to be like, hey, bro, like, what, the, like, what the fuck you doing? Yeah. Like, go, like, go. I'm like, bro, like, yep, we all right, but like, we good. That's so him. a couple of things like, I'm gonna touch. Like, a couple of things I'm gonna touch on right now because I've been telling this this dude my whole life about that. <laughs> What he keeps saying, the difference between me and you is I never had the minute structure like you just said you had where you know I'm going to play 30 minutes a For game. Sure. So he looking at me like I'm coming into the game on my little spots, but I'm not coming in being super aggressive, even though I should have because maybe my time was shorter. But That's I, different. But look, but my mindset being a point guard and being a scoring guard was – the same mindset you had. It's just I didn't have the, the ample opportunity to prove it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to come in trying to force it. And they're like, damn, all he want to do is score. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to still be the point guard and be like, let me come in. And, but then I may come in and Difficult. play five possessions and then come out. And he's saying, like, why the hell you ain't shoot the well, ball? Because one thing mm -hmm. I learned from working out with George was, was one thing he told me was the people that play are in shape and they're consistent. And if you're not on the scouting report, like, it's open season. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming in for five minutes, I'm getting to my spots. And if I'm not in my spot, I'm looking for somebody else. But if I'm in my spot, I'm not even it's, – it's, it's going up. But then this mm -hmm. goes back to what we just talked about. Zay was just here. Mm -hmm. He said, when I first got to uh, Lynchburg, bro, my first four games I had like 80 points combined. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. but okay, so now I'm doing what you told me to do. And then my assistant coach told me stop shooting. That goes back to the confidence. The confidence I, I was sure. I wasn't mm -hmm. self aware, sure. so I'm thinking, damn, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing now. And then he like, what you doing? Be a point guard. Yeah. So that already messed mm -hmm. my mindset up. It, all, it always you always struggle with that, and that's what I that's why I say is I I, I I I understand why you're so passionate about what he's saying because I know that's the that's the player that you wanted to be yes. and that you was, but it was just the situations that mm -hmm. self awareness just wasn't there, and the confidence always conflicted with that. Because that's you know why I mean? minds never translated. Because today going to the gym playing pickup. Just like you said, the first game, I was chilling. Second game, right when we start, the first two possessions, I score. Mm -hmm. The dude that's guarding me, like, damn, man, they told me you was just going to spot up and shoot. I'm like, nah, I can do it all. It's just <laughs> I picked when I wanted to do it. That's fine. So in the men's league now, I know I'm going to play the whole game. So why would I want to go out there and score 60 on some old – let me – let me get the let me get my other players involved because it's fun for me too. Let's pass it to the old dude that missed but the wide it. open layup. <laughs> like we but like I, I definitely can attest to the situation of not having as many opportunities and having to max out on that. Yeah. Um, you know, off the bench like that, off the bench structure is different. Yep. Um my freshman year I came off the bench. Uh when I was I came off the bench like seven of my eleven years as a pro. Damn. I played Granted, I played big minutes in most of those regardless. I played somewhere between 25 and 28 minutes. Either way, I just came off the bench. Um, sometimes that was me asking to come off the bench, and then other times that was just the coaches team wanted to bring me off the bench, which was – I never I never really cared. Um, it was only one situation that I was in as a professional where it was hard for me to, to figure out um, what – like how I could be effective – every night and like what I could do that was going to be effective every night. And I had to accept certain things that was hard to accept knowing I can do it all. Not only that, but also knowing that they needed me to do more. Mm. This is the part of understanding organization or understanding where you at. Like this is what kind of like brings that, bring that part back. Um, 
we had a point guard that was all world, Nick Calathus. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, all world over there, he yeah. over there killing, he over there yeah. getting it in. He in Barcelona now, playing great. Mm. And I was playing behind him, but we was playing together a lot, and we should have been starting together. Yep. They didn't want to see that. We had Fredette. We had um. Y'all were loaded. That, that team was loaded because yeah, not on to cut paper. You off. Yeah, on, on paper. paper. Yeah, <laughs> on and, paper. Hey, hey, and that's crazy. He said on paper because, and I'm gonna go ahead and share this now. I'm a big. Well, at the time I was a big gambler, so I was betting on y'all, and I didn't know the overseas. Like I was betting on anything that was going. So y'all time would be y'all would be playing, and we I would be at work in the morning or yeah. something, right? I'm like, damn, I don't know who on these teams. I look, I see Tyrese name. Oh, I'm betting on them. Easy. <laughs> I see Tyrese name. Then <laughs> let alone you go around. Oh, Nick Clay. Oh, shoot. Boom, boom, boom. Put all my bread on them. Then y'all end up losing to a team y'all not supposed to lose to or don't right. cover the spread. Don't I'm like, cover, yeah. I ain't I'm gonna like, lie. Every time you say you every time we you mention it now, I just imagine you being at work and you see this nigga Tyrese <laughs> pop up bro. and you put the headband on it, you put your money up. <laughs> Like, hey, Reese. Like, you like, I got the headband. I, hey, I got my Reese. bread on Reese. Like, hey, Reese. I'm in, <laughs> bro, Reese. I'm in a bank. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a world where it is not like you can't really bring a lot of hoop stuff to that world. Yeah. And I would have been sitting, I used to be happy as hell. Like, yeah, I just put well, my bread I got on. the suit on I just, with the I headband. My bra- yeah, suit with the headband. No, for real. I used to walk around the bank like, I so, know, <laughs> bro. Look, look, look. Hey, bro, the funniest thing is, I'm going to share this now, bro. Look, people that worked with me, yeah. they knew how serious I was in gambling, but they wouldn't know if I lost a bet by midday. Because, again, y'all would be playing, it'd be morning time, like mm-hmm. 10 o'clock. So I'm like, oh, yeah, by lunchtime, if they ain't cover or they lost, I'm sick. And I'm yeah. like, <laughs> like, your teammate went, huh? I'm like, man, hell no, nah, man. <laughs> it's crazy because on paper, it was like, how could I not put my money on that? Yeah, and, yeah, you know. Man, that's uh, that's annoying. That's setting it up, though. Setting it up. And I don't, you don't got to talk about this, but I know how Vegas work now. So it mm-hmm. was because y'all were so favored on paper, put the money up, and then y'all may slip around and do some mm-hmm. other shit. But besides that, next question I wanted to ask you, that two-parter was, how did it feel when you was playing with Q's? Um did you know a lot of the guys on the team or like, cause you got embraced by a lot of Syracuse fans. Like they, yeah. like you a legend at Syracuse for nah, real. They, like, they really, they, <laughs> they really, they really brought me in for real. So how was that? Did they just roll you the ball or did you have to um, work your way in? Based off the conversation that I had with like the people that was putting the team together, it was kind of understood that like, hey, look, just be the PG, you know, however you see fit. Um, I knew I wasn't going out there like, oh, I'm about to just go out here and go boogie and go kill. Like I knew who was with me. Um, I knew what I knew what we had and I knew the chance that we had. Mm. Um, especially when we um when we picked up, you know, a few other dudes. And I was like, okay, like we could really rent we could we could really like win this joint or whatever. Um but yeah, nah, they gave me the rock. Um he allowed me to you know, kind of just run the show or whatever. And some days it was for me to go and be that, and other days it was for others. Um, and that was, like, the biggest thing that – that's, like, one of the biggest things that I always preach in teams, period, but that was, like, the biggest thing that I was preaching in the TBT. Like, yo, all of us going to have a moment. Mm. Everybody's going to have a moment in here that's going to affect the game. Like, it can't be I only played five minutes this game or I only took this shot. Well, Cause you gonna look fucking crazy, and we are gonna lose, and you are gonna look like a dickhead for us losing a million dollars because you wanted to play more minutes or you wanted to take more shots. I'm like, bro, it's not about that. It's about us coming together for these six games and doing whatever the fuck is gonna take to win this million dollars. It's, it's crazy you say that because, um, I mean, for those who watched it, I I think we'll agree here. But even if you go back and look, it's wild that you say that because one. The same excitement that you gave us in any other time that you played basketball, whether it was Boston College, Bird, anything, you brought that back in the TBT. Like everybody was was watching that them games, and it's crazy because like we all became Q's fans in that moment. But mm-hmm. like, you could literally see what you what you just explained. You could watch that game and see how y'all was moving as a unit, mm-hmm. and that's exactly how it looked. Yep. And that I mean that that speaks to you know. <coughs> I mean, even you in, in the part of your journey, it's like that's how serious it was because you, you're not playing basketball for the same reasons no more. Yep, right. You're here to get these six games out the way, and you rallied around and showed that leadership, and, and y'all did it as a unit. And like I said, it's crazy you say that because I just remember now looking back, like 
I'm watching it and it's just like it's different. Like you really out there doing that. Y'all had DJ Kennedy on your team too. Yeah, so adding, yeah. I remember exactly to piggyback off what Stat saying. Y'all had championship pedigree too because he had he had won he it won, so many times. Five joints. Yeah. yeah so Kane, Kane won four joints. So you saying to a locker room like y'all, it's not about that. He understands that because he won already. Oh yeah, no, nah, we was like a lot of those the guys that we brought Kane, Keith, um, DJ. And myself, we all played in Europe. We all understood roles. Like, we all mm-hmm. understand what it takes and understand that you got to have dudes doing all the intangible shit. You got to have some dudes that's going to score. You got to have some dudes going to come in, hit a shot or two. You got to understand that. Um, and I think that shit was hard at first, you know, for a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes ain't used to sacrifice. Yeah. Um, <sighs> and to win, you got to sacrifice. You got to sacrifice something. It's not going to be all night every night. Yeah. I gotta pull back so that you can be great. You gotta, you might not, you might not say nothing to him because you gotta let him get his off. I might have to say something to you to push you to put the batter in your back. But I, maybe, okay, maybe that forces me to step back so you can go and do your thing as well. Like you gotta, you gotta really deal with all these moving parts, and that shit ain't easy. If they could do it thirty for thirty on us doing them three weeks, y'all niggas would really trip off of that shit because niggas was rumbling like. I'm talking yeah. niggas wild beefing in the locker room, beefing crazy on the court in the game. Like, it was happening. But we all had a goal. We all knew exactly what we wanted. And just as quick as we was to beef in that moment, we had Buddy back, like whoever back it was. Like, mm-hmm. we might beef in that moment right then. Then you see all 15 of us, we chilling at the pool or whatever, getting busy, and we chilling. So it wasn't about nothing. We was able to to keep it together and understand that we had a common goal, and if you was gonna look crazy for not being with the goal, for like for not getting in line, if you're not gonna get in line and you fuck this money up, somebody probably gonna hop on your ass out here yeah. because you you like why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? Like we got a, a golden opportunity in front of us. And, and, and you know, speaking of that, man, I mean, you guys ended up winning that mill. I watched the clips. Um, Cause you know me doing what I do, we gonna we gonna put together a dope little video. Um, I was looking at the highlights and I forgot the guy's name, but the dude who hit the game winning for the for the win, Keith, bro. I was just looking at you the whole time, like, bro, when he when he hit that shot, you was on the opposite wing, yeah. And I just see you like throw your hands up and turn around, like, man, oh, like you could just see dog. that, like it just was like, like what was that like, bro? Like you just threw your arms up and was like, bro. Man, I just got to chill just now. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't even bullshitting. Um, man, when anytime you you put that much into something, regardless of what the result it, result is, mm-hmm. it's just gonna come out you, mm-hmm. like because it's it's built up. Like when you in a when when I'm on the court, I don't get nervous. Like I don't feel like oh shit, I gotta go out here and do it. Like, I don't feel that on a basketball court. Like, I feel fine in any situation, but, like, in the end, it's, like, all the emotion come out right there. Yeah. Either it's up and I'm turned up. Like, people are like, oh, I ain't never seen you talk like that before. I'm like, <laughs> well, you just ain't never been around me like that. Yeah. But it come out of you. And so in that moment, in that moment, first of all, I didn't even see the shot. I saw the shot go in the basket. Like I didn't see him pull up. I didn't know where he shot it from. Yeah. I just knew he shot a three. It was a wild pull too. Yeah, no, no, no. It was a wild pull, especially looking back at it. But I understood exactly what he was doing. Yeah. Like when I looked at it and I asked him what he was doing, and I went back and watched it. I was like, ah, uh, I know why I you see, did that. Yeah. I see exactly what you was doing, sure. and it worked out. It worked out correctly because what's crazy is he looked right at me. He looked at me before he moved. If you look at the Joe, he looking towards me. He looking right at me. I'm looking right at him, and I turned my head to look at the shot clock. And, that's and when, when I turned go. back, I seen the ball. Like, I was turning back oh. to look and see where he was at, and I seen the ball in the air, and I was like, oh, that's why I was like, <laughs> That makes sense oh, now. Like, that bitch went I in. I was like, oh, like, like, hold up. Like, he shot this? Like, what happened? <laughs> and then it went in, and I'm like, oh, shit, he made it. I just, you see, I just put my hands on my Bruh. head. It was like this. Like, I couldn't even react at first. I was like, oh, shit, he just hit this for a meal. Like, this man just hit your three face, for though, a meal. Like, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, like, that's what I was thinking. And I was like, nah, I got to go smack this nigga on his head or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is crazy. But you know, that feeling was, you know, all the emotion just, it just come out. It was going to come out one way or another. It almost came out the possession before that when Buddy got that wide open shot on the baseline. Yeah. I don't know if y'all seen that. Yeah, for yep. sure. Shooter, he shoot maybe 30, 40% in yeah. the G League, you know, all that from three. Like, can shoot the rock. Like, yeah. a shooter, wide open. 
17 footer. When he missed that, I was like, we shooting a three. We Somebody got to shoot a three. Yep, yep. You have to shoot the three yep. right now because we're not going to stop yep. them again. again we're going to stop yep, them three yep. times oh, already. That's facts. I'm like, we stopped them three times. We're not going to stop them again. Yeah, it got shaky for a little yeah. bit. Oh, no, oh, it got real shaky. Like That shot was the only time I felt nervous in that yeah. TBT the whole time. I never thought we was going to lose in no game. Yo, that joint was incredible to watch because it was like a, a, a like Zeke said earlier, um, a blast from the past for us growing up in the city because we know who you were. But then you had so many people that, that you put on notice, man. And I think it was real dope for me because you got to steal game when the layup one one game. Mm -hmm. And it was tough because it was – it kind of that that whole run that you and the squad had. It felt like when Lynn Sanity first came out. When Jerry had, came out. it was a highlight of you. Every, every like, Reese, like, Reese I did this. Reese did, and it's like crazy. Every time <laughs> I turned on sports and it was a crazy ending, and all I saw was the headband still doing it. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> it's crazy that the, the the jersey color different again. But it's like that's the same dude. Yeah, yeah. he's following me my whole life. That's the same dude. Yeah. But um, again, when I heard Jim Bayham, I wanted to speak on this when he. Gave the words. I don't know if you even saw the interview when they, they interviewed him before the game. Well, they interviewed him before the game. It was dope for me because uh, I wasn't able to catch a lot of TBT games. But for some day, for, for some reason on this day, I was able to see the first interview. And they was talking about the team. And he said, and the lady asked him, well, how do you feel about Tyrese Rice? And again, you played against this dude in the ACC. No, nah, he wasn't there yet. I never he won't dare? Hey, how I won't dare? They were still in the Big East. Oh. We left the Big East to go to ACC. That, okay, makes so sense. The Big though. East was still the Big the Big East. The Big East, we know the, the Big East. Louisville, okay, UConn, okay. Pitt, but still, it's, it, it still was dope because Correct. he still knew who you were. But um, you know, he never got a chance to coach you. So you doing that for his program? Jim Beheim is Syracuse. You doing that for his program? And the words he he said about you, it made me feel good. Like, yo, this dude can can really go against the odds because not a lot of people either even play for that situation. I mean, mm -hmm. people took it where I went to school that serious. So seeing Syracuse fans, um, you know, adapt to you how they did, how did that make you feel in that moment? I mean, it was – it felt great. Like, that was, like, the first – shit, if I'm being honest, I was the first school to, like, really embrace me like that. Damn. Like, if I'm being honest, you know what I'm saying? Like, Bird, you know, my high school day, I never – I've never done anything up at Bird. Like Meadowbrook, Meadowbrook embraced me. You know what I'm saying? Like even even BC. Like now I've now I'm building that relationship. You know, with BC getting ready to go back up to BC and, re and really do things with them. But I ain't been there since 2009. Mm. Yeah. So to have a school like behind you, support you, pushing you, like uh, yo, you get an honorary degree. Like oh you, yeah, you with the Q's now, and they. Cues this, cues that, sending packages to my crib. That's like, crazy, like, bro. That's crazy. Like I, like I, I tweeted this and <laughs> I didn't mean no disrespect by it. Like I wasn't really saying. I was like, man, I got more Syracuse gear than BC gear, and I knew them people for two weeks. Oh, that joint was that serious kid. that they no, they, that, they made that a, a TBT post. Like they, they no, no, no. You might to put no, it up yeah. on the joint. Like that's yeah. real though. If if you walk into a Syracuse gym and you look up and you see four rice up there, you wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> they, they, not for real, they bang with him that much. Nah, Niggas be like, sure. oh man, Reese went to, Reese went to Q's? They, they had nah, to go look up what did, years though, he played at BC right? to be yeah, like, why the hell? Sure, for sure. What the hell happened? At the bottom, they gonna have a little asterisk, <laughs> BC, Behan's but Syracuse from like, <laughs> you gonna have to like, say Behan's army on it. <laughs> but Behan's like, it's crazy, bro, um, seeing that and again, just on the outside looking in, I was like, damn, man, like, it's nothing that this dude really can't do. So this is the part I really want to ask you this. What people see is one thing. You made some mistakes as well. Mm -hmm. Do you how do you how do you look back on those now and say, the reason that I'm this way, that y'all see me this way is because of mistakes I came from. Cause not a lot of young people understand that, that you're gonna still, even though the all the success you had, you had some bumps in the road. Were those would you trade would you trade those to know that it pushed you? Or what would you tell young people to to kinda how to nah, bounce back from their mistakes? No, nah, everything is a everything is an experience. Um you and you gonna make mistakes. Like as you grow, you're gonna make mistakes. Mm -hmm. If you ain't making no mistakes growing, you probably ain't even trying to do Nothing you know, you real. really ain't really trying for real. Like something gonna happen in there where you're gonna make a mistake and you're gonna have to learn from it and you're gonna have to deal with that. Adversity that come, um, 
And I think that, you know, some of the mistakes that I made, it just built strength. Like, it, it made me look at myself. Um, I've never been one to point the finger at, at other people. Mm-hmm. And when I did, I caught, I caught it quickly or somebody caught it for me and they told me. Like, that's another great thing about having people close to you, around you. My mom, my mom, one of the most fair individuals in the world. Like, I think, like, if it's right, it's right. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. She don't care if it's you, me, Sean, my my youngest son. It don't matter who it is. If you wrong, you wrong. And if you right, then you right. But if you wrong, you got to deal with that. You got to stand in that because you made a decision. And you got to go through whatever come your way. Um... And I think that going through the process and embracing it and living in it and understanding that it might not feel like it, but you got better mm. by being able to get through it, like that does something for you later on as you get older because you also going to come across times that something was very, very difficult. Um, a situation didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Um, you got an opportunity and you fucked it up doing something, you got to learn how to get through that. You got to take that experience for what it was and not make that mistake again. You might make a different mistake, but you do the same thing. You learn from that learn from that experience and then and you go on with it. So I think that having that forward mindset and understanding that you're going to make mistakes and you're allowed to make mistakes, mm-hmm. um, you know, it kept me pushing. It kept me getting through. I think it, it kept me low to the ground as well. And that was just too based off the the self awareness piece that we speak about a lot. Also, the accountability that's that you speak about all the time, man. Taking accountability, and not a lot of younger people. I mean, still people our age still they don't want to take accountability. It ain't no age on it. It's just you, you either want to do it and get better from it, or you want to keep running away from it, trying to hide it, and then that joint is going to slow your progression down ten times as much. But man, we talked about that in the live. Yep. yep, we talked about that in the live. I had said in the live, the book that I'm reading, "The Horses Speak of God." It was a, it's a part in there that says, "The horse is never wrong." Like the horse ain't never wrong. Like you can't blame anything else on somebody else. Like you gotta look in your, you gotta look in the mirror first. You gotta figure out what you can do to better the situation, and you gotta figure out what you did wrong in that situation and you can't put that on anybody else because you can only control your feelings your thoughts and your emotions and your actions and you can't put that on you know the next person um and they were saying that because she was saying that because she's talking about mastering the horse and she's on the horse she's riding the horse and the horse rides off a field so if you put your heels in the horse rib too hard or you smash the horse head a little bit too fast, the horse going to go crazy. He's going to yeah. run faster. He's going to slow down. He's going to stop. He's going to jump. He's going to be afraid. He's going to act fearful. But he's doing that because of you. Mm-hmm. So it ain't his fault that he's doing it. It's yours. Yeah. So you got to be the one to look in the mirror and take that accountability because if you do that, that might be what changed the situation. When she started riding the horse correctly, everything was smooth. So it wasn't the horse's fault. And you saying, yeah, because him saying that just now makes me realize that, you know, conversations we have all the time, I kind of want to stop having them and, and kind of blaming those people that we say did us wrong as far as like in the in the basketball aspect, because mm-hmm. I still got Reese, I still got coaches that I, like I just told you this the other day, I won't even look their way if I saw them on the street because I feel like they held me back. But what you I, just I'm said. I'm the same way. Like, it, it's normal. It ain't like. But I think the the part I'm trying to get at that's not normal is they did that to you, but you channeled it different. Mm-hmm. I did that, and I was held back, and I keep saying they're the reason why that, that I was held mm-hmm. back instead of me saying, what can I do more? Mm-hmm. So I think that's what I'm trying to get at is you still might not bang with those coaches, but you're not blaming them for nothing because you still put the work in, and you still got a better result off of it. Well, so they done, they done pushed you to your lane. They don't push you to your lane. Like you still in ball, you still doing it. Yeah. Maybe you just ain't play it, but you are gonna still make the impact that you were supposed to make. Yeah. You can sure. still you can still get to the level that you was that you felt like you were supposed to get to. Like, I mean, you might not have played D one, or maybe you wanted to play D one. Maybe you wanted to go to UNC. Yep. 
who knows? What if you end up on UNC coaching staff? Yeah. Would you end up doing something for UNC like that? Would you still feel the same way? You would still feel like you made it. Yeah. So that path and that journey might have steered you a different way. But if you still chugging forward and you still moving forward and you learn something from it, like you can look at it and understand it. Yeah. Like you can look right at it and be like, nah, this is what happened right here. And that was they fault. And you were a kid. So it probably was. Yeah. Being a kid, being a grown person, I don't want to hear it was they fault. Yeah. Being a grown person. But as That's a kid, true. you know, it's a different, it's a different type of reaction. So it's understood and it makes yeah. sense. But now that you can look back at it and be like, this is what happened right here. Now, the only thing that's wrong is if you make that same mistake with another kid. Yep. That's that's when it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like that's facts. It's not facts. wrong. It, it's it's not wrong that it happened. Like it happened to you. It's over with. That's a yep. part of your experience. You yep. learn from that. But if you repeat that experience, or if you repeat those thoughts in something else that you do, now it's wrong. And I I just had spoke on that. Um, on shoot, I think it was on your origin story a little bit, or. But I had a breakdown with my players last year, the last game of the season, because exactly what you just said. I got emotional with them, and I was pissed because I wasn't trying to give them the experience that I had. Because just like you said, if I go and make that same bonehead decision with me being the coach now on players, one of those players can be how I felt. I never wanted somebody to go into it saying, my coach held me back because I was able to say that. So when I was giving them that game and trying to give them the – the ability to not have to go through that, it was like a slap in the face because they didn't respond to it how I thought they should. Mm Because I'm like, yo, I could really be a dickhead out here Mm -hmm. and I'm doing this the opposite way and y'all taking advantage of it, not showing up to workouts, Mm -hmm. showing up to the game 20 minutes before the game. Like, Mm -hmm. it 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 was a slap in the face and you just made me realize that regardless of how it made me feel in that moment, that's still what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not supposed to change that and give those players the same experience I had because I know how that feels. And you're doing your job. And I'm doing like, my job. You're yeah. doing your job. Like, your, your job ain't to be like, hey, hey, come on, cuz, we, we going to the gym, we going to do this. Your job is to go and open it. Yeah. You you went to open it. You If they call you and they need you, you there. If they want to get in the gym, you open in the gym. If they want some help, you get some help. Yeah. Like, that's, you doing your job. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't do but so much. Especially now, yeah, like oh, for sure. you know, dudes' resources are just totally different. With that, what they got at their hands is totally different. You know, when we was com- when we was coming up, when we was getting rolled around, getting picked up to go to the gym, you know where we was at. Yeah, like we was in one of two or three places. You can pull right up and be like, "Hey, come on, we going to the." That's what it was back then. It just ain't that now. No, that's dope, man, and that's a perfect segue into you know the most important piece of this interview, um, which. It's already been a legendary conversation, man. Um, but I think what's most important and something that is is now your new focus is the Trusted Legacy brand. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the opportunity to go with you today on one of your projects that you got in the works. And when we talk about, you know, everything that you just said, um, I see what you're trying to do with Trusted Legacy. We talk about it a lot. And, I, and, and what's dope for me, I, I say this all the time, you know, me being self-aware and finding my purpose – it came out as stat, strive to achieve together. But what's dope is that everything that I do at this point, trusted legacy mean the same shit to me. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this all day today and um, being able to come together and understand that is what's going to serve a bigger purpose. So, you know, for, for the people that don't know, you know, what it, what is trusted legacy and what is that – purpose now being that you'd had the career you had I mean because you've done so much already you could easily not do anything else Mm -hmm. why trusted legacy and what what is it and what what's your purpose behind that um trusted legacy is the aim to you know just build out a complete athlete the whole athlete um in all aspects you know in all aspects of walks of life you know not just on the basketball court but mentally Mm -hmm. like through programming through training you know through consultants like do therapy like do everything and just having a complete understanding of why things are the way they are and how you can move about you know and be successful Mm -hmm. um like i said through ball through football through whatever sport and bridging that gap between those sports and, and mental health 
Um, and I think that that's just super important for all of the, like, any young kid or not even the kids, like, even grown people, it's yeah. professionals, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would take on professionals in this. Um, ones that are receptive, that are ready to be receptive. Yeah. Um, but everybody needs this right now. We need it in our communities. We need that um, as a resource. We need that, you know, at these rec centers, you know, in all these places so that people have some hope and they have some understanding mm -hmm. about what they're doing mm -hmm. and they believe that they can actually go and achieve certain things. Um, and they're getting the right guidance while they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And they're able to take, you know, whatever game I give them, whatever resources that I give them, um, and make it 100 times better and give it back. Yep. You know, I really would want to only work with people who are like-minded, and have a, a desire to impact um, so that they can do it 100 times better. And that's super so. dope, man, because, you know, again, we laughed about it um, off air. We still laughing about it, about me wearing the headband and, mm -hmm. and seeing you from that, from that space and being like, damn, I want to be like this dude. To me growing up, you growing up, different paths, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, um, we didn't cross paths that much, but it was like, to have the same mindset now is the amazing thing because that's what Stat trying to do, that's what you trying to do, that's what I'm trying to do is because now we were the blueprint to that. Like, we went through that stuff. When we was growing up, you couldn't talk about mental health. It was not acceptable. It was almost like, what you talk about? Like, now it's like, that's a thing. So now we know the athletes that go through it. So mm -hmm. why not try to help them, correct them, give them the safe space to come talk about that stuff? Because we didn't have that. We didn't know who to, like, we didn't have no safe outlets. So for guys to to really understand and girls too, like um that that mindset is the the I, I think the pinnacle of if you have it, it is a great thing. If you don't have it, it is one of the worst things you cannot have. Mm -hmm. And especially in the day that we live now, the society we live in, your mindset gotta be a certain way for you to survive this jump. Because if not, you really gonna be walking around lost. here. Yeah, you you are robot. You are robot. Lost. Like that was the perfect segue. You're an eye robot if you don't if you don't tap into your mindset and and really shift it to what society is telling you your your mindset should be. Cause it, it's a false narrative out here that's telling you you should be like this, but that's because they want you to be like that. So you won't tap into what you mm -hmm. really who you really are. I mean, so I think that's dope that Trusted Legacy is trying to do that because again, growing up seeing you from afar, it's like, damn, how, how are we on the same frequency right now? That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And the thing with that is like, you know, and, I, and I'm glad you said that, Deuce, because, um, you know, we haven't really said it clear, and I'm going to say it clear right here. Like, part of what we're doing here is I don't care what your athletic career look like. I don't care where you come from. We all can relate to understanding that until reality hit us that it won't gonna work out the way we thought it was gonna work out, we thought it was gonna work out like that. And when it doesn't, you go into a space that a lot of people don't make it out of. And what's dope about this conversation right now is me and Deuce are just two regular dudes that, and, and I said this to you earlier, I'm glad I didn't make it to the league or even make it D1 or any of that because for me, I understand it gave me a head start on becoming self-aware. Mm -hmm. The moment reality hit me and I hit that wall, I had to start asking myself those tough questions or I was going to quit and I ain't that type of person. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, even having you here, you saying the same stuff that we're talking about, but you had a great career, but it still come down to it didn't work out the way you thought it was and you mm -hmm. made the best of it because you had to look yourself in the mirror and say, what is it that I'm trying to do? And you talked about that earlier with guys and, and the route that they take now with the transfer portals and all this stuff. Like, you got to ask yourself those tough questions. And so what's dope about this is that we're going to come from so many different perspectives, us being regular guys, you being somebody that a lot of people look up to, and us talking about the same things. It's going to connect with so many different people. And the more people that we can bring into that and have them become self-aware, mm -hmm. that's going to help because – Yours is trusted legacy. Mine is stat. Deuce's stat. And then also what he has going on with coaching and everything else. But the person that we're going to reach, it might be something. Else. It might be pets. It might yeah, be all, whatever. You know, but because, you know what I mean? Because we all came in with the same, like you said earlier, like we all, the, the, the thing in the middle is the same. Mm -hmm. 
We just coming from a different All outlook different angles, of it. And yeah. the people that's going to relate to you going to relate to you, but the people that's going to relate to us going to relate to us. But we're going to understand no matter what room you in, it's all coming back to the middle. Yeah. It all it all goes hand in hand. I mean, I always compare like life and ball like all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I I do that all the time. Like it's I tweet about it all the time. Yep. Like it, it's really it's really the same. Yep. I always say like those same feelings that you get when you in business and you like, "Oh, I got a meeting. Mm-hmm. Like this could go like if this go right, you know, like this going to be a good thing and you go in there you a little bit nervous." You probably feel that same thing when you get ready to come out of timeout. You know, it's a game ball on the line. You got to go out there and hit this. Yep. That same feeling. So if you're able to channel them feelings in situations that are off the basketball court, once you do step on the court, it's going to be that much easier for you. Yep. And at the same time, if you have that calmness, that calmness, like I built that calmness on the basketball court. Like that belief I built on the basketball court, just understanding that like, like, Nah, I can get through any situation. I'm, the game ain't over till it's over. Like, I'm going to keep on fighting. And if we lose, I'm going to come back 10 times harder. Yeah, It's the same thing in life. It's the same thing in business. It's the same thing when you're going, when you're trying to figure things out. You're going to go through it. You're going to lose. How are you going to come back from the yeah. L? Like, how are you going to build on that next part? Like, how are you going to... Manage your emotions so that you can excel the next time, the next go around. Yep. So, I mean, it's like, you know, it's little things like that that need to be understood, mm-hmm. you know. And then it's like we were talking about earlier. It was like it ain't just as easy as just going to get shots up in yeah. business. Yep. But then again, in business, you're doing all that research and all of that. That's the grind right there. In basketball, you're getting them shots up, but you also need to understand where you at. That's a whole nother research. Like that's more research. Like you need to understand what this coach is, what he like, and it comes out to you like. getting that information to make the right decision that yeah. you so got to be can accountable for, no matter what it's we look at. Same at. thing yeah. as doing all that research and being successful in business, yep. not knowing if it's gonna work or not. Yep. You don't know if it's gonna work. Yep. You just got to get all the research so you can be prepared. Yep, and stay. You got to get decision. all of this knowledge so that you can be prepared. Yeah, like it's the same thing on a basketball court. You need to know what's going on. You need to go take all these shots so that when you get in the game, hopefully you're hitting all them bitches. It's a bigger probability that you're going to hit it in that spot versus the one that you ain't been, been working on. Correct. But when you look at, you know, we're talking about the greats, you know, that, that play ball, that switched into business, and you're one of those people, you look at how successful people who know the grind – in basketball, how successful they are in business because they know that same grind. Mm-hmm. The people who shortcut shit, they really don't care about the grind, but they still can be okay to good basketball players. That life after basketball is so hard for them because they don't, when they get hit with that business oh, wall, they don't know, they never felt that before. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's why it's cool for athletes to tap in and understand that what you're learning and the reps that you put in, the thousand shots you take, all the mad hours you put in basketball, don't think it's just for basketball. It's really how to transition in the game of life. Yeah. And I spoke yeah. on this uh, last episode, Zeke, about the game of life is, Reese, you just said it, it's the same as basketball. You're going to have times when you're going to lose. And if you lose, guess what? Now I'm in the gym more because I got to figure out what I did wrong to get better. So in business, it's the same thing. Like, you lose, and a lot of people that have successful businesses they lost in the beginning a, mm-hmm. a lot of times yep. but they also a, a knew a bunch of times a bunch mm-hmm. of times but they also knew that we're kind of going back to the basketball thing I know I gotta look at my mistakes take accountability for it and get up and do something more 10 times more this time so like that was awesome that you said that because the game of life in basketball is literally the same it's, it's directly same. correlated man yeah mm-hmm. and you know let the people know, like, what, as of right now, because you got a lot of stuff that you're about to start doing as well, but I want people to understand, like, all of the information for this is going to be in the description. Y'all tap in, like, for real. Yeah, for sure. But I'm let gonna people know what Trusted Legacy has to offer, um, anything that you want to share, you know, how they can get involved, whatever it is, let people know right now because this is something that's huge, and I'm going to just mm-hmm. keep it a 1,000. If 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 the stuff we talking about how you impacted us with basketball, if you watching this and you felt the same way, 
I ain't even gonna hold you. Like you better be tapping in with this because it's no different. Mm -hmm. It's even more important. So again, let the people know what you have going on and how they can tap in with that because this this has to be something that's important for everybody involved mm -hmm. and everybody hearing this right now. Um, trusted trusted legacy is full. You know, one on one training. Um, and I don't mean just on the basketball court. The, the honestly, the basketball court part is the light part for me. Like that's I'm I'm not worried about ball. I want to really have people that's gonna tap into their mentals and really be ready to go on this journey because it's a crazy journey. It's a lot of information that's needed in this journey. It's a lot of time that you got to put in this journey. It's a lot of dedication that you got to put into this journey if that's what you really want. Um, and so I'm a, I'm gonna put together I'm actually putting together um like a model of what I want it to really look like so that when people see it they know exactly what it is like people look at it like oh yeah I can come get some training I'm like yeah no nah, I'm not a trainer like that's just not that's not the only thing that I'm doing yeah like I want you to see exactly what I'm doing and if you committed to this then boom you got my undivided attention um you got my one-on-one -on -one attention. You need me to come to you. You come to me, or however you want to do it. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna be ready to put that out very soon. Um. The website trustedlegacy.org. Um. Everything that I'm doing is always on there. Um. Also with trusted legacy, it's about the community. Um. It's about giving it back. Um. If you're not helping somebody, you're not really living a life. Facts. You know, Fred Hampton said something very similar to that. Yep. Um. And we got you. Just got to understand that it's all about community and the people around you, and affecting them and impacting them. Um, if you're not, if you're not giving that game for people to give that game to others, then you know it's it's a waste. You know you're doing everybody out here a disservice. Service. And we, um, Ipsy said it, man. Find your purpose, or you wasting there. Yeah, man. yeah. So your yeah. purpose is always tied to helping somebody else. Yeah, people um, got to get to their guts in doing that. Not for sure. Everybody, they quick, believe everything they see. Go ahead. Not man. for sure. I was gonna say. Um, Cause I, 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 we've been tapping in the last couple of weeks, man, the Instagram live. I think that's something that's huge. I mean, it's, it's been great, but like, we definitely want to get more people tapped into that as well. So speak on what you got going yeah, on. The Instagram, um, live. The Instagram live and me and my man, Jack McClinton. Shout out Jack. Yeah, shout, shout out, out Jack, Jack man. McClinton, Jack man. Real Step back yeah, Jack. Real um, actively trusted every Thursday. Um, we normally go somewhere between seven and nine. Um, I usually post it on my Instagram. Reese Rice died full on Instagram. Um, but we talking about self-awareness. We talking about mental health. We talking about mentality. We talking about ball. We talking about business. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about what's going on in society. Uh, we talking about frequencies. We talking about a yeah. little bit of everything on there. And we just tying it all in to make people understand that it goes together. Everything is affected by each other. Um, like we said earlier, the self awareness affected by it's affecting people's social awareness, relationships, um, things that you can build, how far your relationships go. Yep. It all, you know, it all starts within you. And when you understand that, then you can do all the other things. So that's what we talking about, you know, actively trusted on Thursdays, somewhere between seven and nine PM. My man Jack. A lot of people tap in, man. If you got things to say, you got topics you want to talk about. Uh -huh. Um, send DMs, yep. send a message, tap into the live, um, request to come in the live. You know, we done had some some real dope people come through. Yep. Shout from out to JY, man. Yeah, Shout JY. out to hey, my man JY, <laughs> Jamal Young, man. My man JY out of Baltimore, out of East Baltimore, man. He's crazy, man. Shout Great out Lennon as well. Nah, man, y'all do a dope job with that. And um, Lennon Fournette, for sure. Yeah, Fournette Tim came Anderson. in that jump. That was dope. That was dope. And it's yeah. crazy because, um, you know, I was – I was tuned in. Um, Stat wasn't here, but he had told me, yo, Reese and them doing the live, bro. Let's tap in. I'm like, for sure. And I, I pulled up. I look at the joint. I see he in the car. He get on the joint. Um, Jack was reading the comments. He like, hey, yo, add in from the 7 podcast. Reese was like, oh, them the guys from the crib I'm about to go out there with them next week. I'm like, they about to put this man stat on the live, yeah. bro. This is about to be lit. <laughs> man, he popped in that jump in the car. Like, I'm like, oh, this is lit. Hey, man, add Leonard Fournette in that jump. <laughs> we was just watching, Yo, bro, run I'm the going, touchdown. I'm like, two days going before crazy that. in this jump. What's crazy is, look, I'm going to tell you what else crazy. He tapped into the live. I had the TV on. Uh -huh. And they just showed a clip of him. Man. Yeah, going yeah. in the jump. They showed a clip of him <laughs> score when I was getting ready to push him on the jump. I said, man, that's why I started talking about the fantasy shit. But yeah. Yeah. man, Lenny pop on that jump. He in the bed. Like, <laughs> right. 
I'm like, yo, this is crazy right now, bro. I'm running around Reese. I'm running around this zone like, yo, it's crazy. So like, they y'all really do a good job at that, man, because you never know who gonna pop in there, and man. y'all y'all get everybody that safe space too, bro. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, that. man. Jack got a lot of got a lot of connections, man. He know a lot of people down in Miami. A lot of people fuck with Jack. Um, a lot of people, you know, they fuck with me as well. But you know, I was Jack is the the outgoing guy. Jack, the guy that, you know, go and talk to everybody. I just started talking to people, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, recently, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's a little bit different. But, you know, messing around with Jack, though, honestly, you never know who going to pop you up You never know who's going to pop up. You in. really never know. Um, yeah. Like, Tim Anderson was on there with us. Quinn he Cook stayed in there. there. Quinn yeah. Cook, they stayed in there for hours, though. Yeah. Like, uh, you saw about Funny Marco. He popped yeah. in. Yeah, they yeah. all popped in. Like, you know, That's people crazy, just going to pop in randomly and and – if they really, you know, if they really trying to talk and if they really trying to speak on what we speaking on, then it ain't nothing to let them in. And like, that's what I'm saying. That's why I appreciate y'all so much because you and Jack don't owe that to the people in the middle or at the bottom. Y'all just don't. Yeah. And y'all still give those people the safe space because the time Lenny uh, popped in that joint, y'all had ended it and now Stat is here. So now he in the crib with me and I'm sitting right here and Jack hop on his live after because I think one of y'all was hungry. Me, uh, yeah. yeah Reese like, was like, "Hey, right, man, man, I, I, I love the convo, hours, but <laughs> I got I'm <heat>. hungry." <laughs> Postmates, Postmates just showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I said, "Shorty was cooking." Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jack. Jack said Postmates showed up. Yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. right after your live ended, he started one, and I hopped on his joint and I said some, and I I like said something and I walked away, and I came back, and it was like, McClinton is is at, is trying to add you in the chat. I'm like, what? Like, damn, Jack about to put me. And then that was the same night, remember? I was on for like 35 minutes, 45 Yeah, minutes. and he let me come on, bro. And he really listened, though. Like, he yeah. was, he let me talk what we was talking about. He listened, and then he had something productive to say back to me. It, it, it wasn't That's like, I'm going to just let you hop in here and say what you got to say, and I ain't listening. Y'all really do a good job of giving everybody that safe space. Give so voice. tap Jack in, man, because voice. really, if y'all on that same type of time, they will let you come on there. And now it's, again, like, the world is the world is watching regardless of who or how many we know. Just like y'all name the big mm-hmm. names that pop in there. I'm telling y'all, I was on live with y'all. When Lenny popped in, that joint went from like 20 people to 1,200. 1,200 people. Because like everybody that. was notified from but him. Look, this one was crazy. This is what you know had me for like 30, 40 minutes after he was off. It was still like 300 people. Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah. Like it was yep. dope. I was like, nah, yep. that's that's actually no, that's yep. actually super dope. Um Y'all having had me tapping, in there man. like, whoa, what up? Yo, <laughs> that's like, what I'm like, we here, we just rocking. Like, yeah, you know, bro, but that was you tough know, to man, see man. that, and I, that's when I had the screenshot, and I, I had uh, reached out to you mm-hmm. when you saw that. That was a good night. We was in this joint turned up, bro. We was turned up, and I, turned. and 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 the reason, like I said, is because Lenny come in there, y'all could have easily been like, Jack could have easily been like, hey, bro, that dude that we added in, all right, bro, we're going to holler at you later, which would have been you. Yep. <laughs> but they was like, you yeah. stayed in the whole way. Uh, the whole way. And the whole still way. let me speak afterwards. And that know? was so she, dope, even when he was, Even when Lenny was in there, he was rapping. Yeah, that's so. what I'm saying. Like, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the dopest part because, like you said, you say this all the time, bro. The people who make it, they don't come back how you're trying to come back and really get a game back, really let people speak, really mm-hmm. give back to the community. But we ain't going to never date. Bro, I ain't going to just hold, I ain't going to hold you. Like a superstar, superstar, you're not hopping on their live, bro. Nope. First of all, they're not even going to see your comment. Nope. All right? Mm-hmm. But if they do, you still not about to get no requests like, "Oh, bro, let me let me hear what buddy talk about." They don't care. That's right. Right. And that's why they can't relate to those that's trying to figure out the game. He coming back like, "Yo, I'm going to give everybody this game. Everybody There's has a safe gap. space." And he didn't yeah. and him and Jack, people like that, they don't have to. But the fact that y'all are doing it again, always I, I said this for like the last two hours now. You already different, bro. Like you're in a different category when it comes to hoop, life, mindset, all that stuff. So people that's out there that's watching this right now, he's really letting y'all know that this is all the same stuff that we all go through. Regardless yeah. of what, again, the middle is the same. Sad, like you said, we all just trying to find our own path to get there. So really tap in with this man, really tap into what he got going on, because He's a real one for real. Like oh, that's dude, facts, you don't man. have to gotta, do that, man. I gotta tell y'all. I gotta tell y'all this. Um, hearing y'all, you know, what y'all have to say, you know, about me as a hooper and, and the effect, you know, that it had on y'all. Like that's, like, I don't even know what to say, you know, about moments like that. Like that shit is motivating, you know, in itself, you know, for me to keep doing 
whatever it is that I'm out here doing just because it's understood that that people are affected by these things. Like you telling me the story about the headband. Yep. And you talking about, you know, the first game, you know, was that was that uh bird at Meadowbrook. Yep. Um, it take me back to y'all remember uh Jalen Elliott? Remember Jalen Elliott? He went to Bird. Nah. He went to Bird. He went and played football at uh at Notre Dame. He in the league now. He was with Detroit for a little bit, but anyway, crazy story. His step pops, I mean my step pops knows his dad. And his my step pops had me take him in the locker room with us at Bird. I'm at Bird. This is my senior year in high school. Had me take him in the locker room with me. He was like eight, something like that. That's crazy. And he talked about that moment when he was in like a junior in college. He was doing an interview and he brought up that moment. Like I had I had a guy, I don't know if y'all know him named Tyrese Rice. He played this, that, that. He took me in the locker room with him after winning his games and I just saw how they was in there and I wanted to be that and it motivated me. Like that's that's crazy. That's crazy. Like I get the chills again. Like yeah. that shit is crazy for me. You know, so like hearing y'all talk about it, hearing stories like that, um, I gotta let y'all know that that shit is motivating. Yeah, like that dope, shit is motivating. Man. That shit is that shit's always that's always been what's pushed me. Um I can never I, I never cared about MVP trophies. I never cared about um, the glitz and the glamour of being on the front line or any of that shit. Like, I never cared about that. Like, let me get my, you know, give me my little ribbon and I'm gone. You know, yeah. I'm good. I'm going to probably give it to a little kid and shit and let him take that with me. For sure. you know, like, take that with him. You know, like, that's just always been me in every situation. So I got to say that I appreciate y'all. Um, I appreciate y'all having me for one. And then, you know, telling me stuff like that, like that effect, that impact. That was had like that shit is really like that put me in like a in a great space all the time because that's really what motivated me like that's really what what pushes me I used to tell my homies that all the time I used to be like y'all don't even know how much y'all push me yeah and y'all ain't even doing nothing I'm watching yep. yeah like I, I see I got eyes like like we was talking about on the elevator yeah. I was like bro I got eyes yeah. bro. like nah, I, vision was crazy I see things better like, <laughs> you I spotted that joint out quick and I'm not <laughs> even like saying that just to like say that like mm -hmm. I really see shit like. I could see it happen beforehand. I could see it. Um, I could see it in people, and I and I get motivated by what could happen. I get motivated by um, what the, like the effect that people say that they have. Like yeah. I get motivated by that because I'm watching and I see all different situations. I understand that everybody gonna have some kind of success in their situation, and if they put and if they saying they got something from me like that, that mean I got to keep doing whatever yeah. the fuck I'm doing. Uh, that's re that's real, bro. And uh, I mean, we definitely appreciate you being here. Shout out hey, to man. George, man. Um, for y'all that don't know, he was on the first episode. My He's dog. a big part of the reason why we even here and why stat is even a thing. So, you know, shout out to Big Bro for even you know connecting us with you because um, I mean, Deuce probably gonna go to bed with the headband on the night. I ain't even gonna hold <laughs> nah, it. facts. I got like, I got, I got that jump waiting already. For real. Shout out to G too, man. Yeah, shout, shout out, out to, to George, man. Sure. That's, yeah. that's my guy. That's I my need to brother, do a lot man. For he me, he for changed sure. my life, bro. Real talk. And um. You know, we just wanted to give you your flowers, Shit, I can say bro. the same. To be honest with you, right yeah. now, doing that right now, helping me out right now. Nah, for sure. Shit. But yeah, my he, bad. He, he, he now nah, you good. He a real one like that, man. And and mm -hmm. I think, you know, when I say he changed my life, that's what I talk about. Is that mm -hmm. my whole life? People acted like I wasn't worthy of that that type of stuff that George did for me. And George didn't know me as much as these people knew me, and he did that for me. That changed mm -hmm. my life. And everything we talking about right now comes back to that we we trying to impact people that don't even know us you impacted us and before you even knew us and so i understand what you're saying when it's like man like that perspective is 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 real bro so again we we wanted to give you your flowers and um you know i just want to say respect to you for even being the type of person that's done what you've done in basketball and you're now trying to reach back down and and, and, yep. and impact people because the, the amount of people that you're going to impact you did so much in the back game of basketball. You're going to impact even more with what you got going on right now. And that's what I'm saying, guys, if you're watching this, um, tap in with what he's got going on. Like, y'all going to see us in there as well. We in there every week, man, with the mm -hmm. Instagram lives. Um, you got stuff going on with the events and everything. I mean, a lot of the same stuff that you got going on yeah. are things that we're trying to do as well. And it's not one of those things where it's like, well, why are you trying to do what we're doing? Like, nah, we all need nah, to be. We, we can all use that. each other's resources and everything. You know? Yeah. Like, you know, if – if I'm doing it, you doing it, G doing it. If everybody doing it, then we big enough the community because we all coming from different 
We all coming from different yeah. angles. And it's from it a, goes, genuine, a genuine space. And go back to what we was talking about earlier. It it being like this is like this is it. Like this is the core thing right here. That's where we all trying to go. I'm coming from here. You coming from here. Yep. You coming from here. And everybody going and pouring into this. And we're going to fill this cup up. And then we're going to get that joint to the next group of motherfuckers. And they're going to fill that joint up with, with double of that. Oh, that's fact. And, you know, that's just how it's going to go. Like, we're going to able, we're gonna be able to grow everything in and, and really make the impact that we think we should going to be making with them. I'm, I know for sure it's going to start with us because we're the first generation to see both sides. Yep. yep. I say yeah. that all the time. We're yeah, the first we generation the to see the old school mentality yep. Yep. and the new school mentality. And we can operate in both. We can operate yep. in both, but it's up to us to give the new school, that old school game as well, so they understand that, you know, you still gotta have some humility when you do this. No, for sure. We 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 was chosen to do it. I mean, ain't I mean you talk about this all the time, dude, mm-hmm. being the blueprint. Yep. When you know, it ain't no questioning it. You the blueprint because the people that maybe questioned it that was supposed to impact us, they didn't do it because they probably thought they weren't worthy of it, they won't suffer with. Mm-hmm. Nah, when you know, you know. And when it's for you, it's for you. And we understand what's for us. And again, we're trying to get back, you know, to the middle. But um, yeah, man, if you want to just go ahead and, I mean, like, this has been a, a legendary episode, oh, yeah, for sure. man. Um, yeah, I'm going I'm to give Reese the last word. I want to go ahead and say my last piece um, before we, you know, close out of here. Um, it's crazy, man, because I, I tell Stat this all the time, like, when we talk about the timing of everything, right? I'm like, yo, this show could be five hours. I don't give a damn. Reese on this joint. Like, <laughs> I talk for seven hours with, with this man because little do you know, bro, and again, you hearing you say you appreciate us and to motivate you and stuff, bro, like, for me, I don't even know how to take that. I'm getting chills right now because if you would have told me when I was a kid that I would sit down with Kobe Bryant, I would thought y'all was stupid. If you would told me when I was a kid, I would just sit down with, with Reese Rice, I I would I would be like, you stupid. Because I, I looked at y'all as those people. Y'all were myths to me, right? And when that happens and you finally get the opportunity and the dude could be an asshole or something, like, you're like, damn, man, this is the dude that I really was looking up mm-hmm. there at that. Then he he can't see my level. He, he, he don't even respect my level. That's the opposite with you. And again, I said this eight times now. You were so different. Meeting you in person, hearing your mindset, hearing your story. You just coming on here, bro. We bro, we haven't been doing this but for a couple months, bro. Like you mm-hmm. could have easily been like, nah, I'ma wait. Like, who? Nah, all right, George told me about him, but nah, maybe I'm gonna wait. He mm-hmm. was like, nah, sign me up. And that's super they dope, bro. Get, that, I'm a, I'm gonna live with that forever. Like, we might, man, we don't have to make another fucking podcast. I'm gonna be <laughs> like, yo, we <laughs> like, so give me your flowers, bro. Um, you Definitely impacted me as a basketball player, regardless of, you know, how much you understand and know. But um, I, I just think it's dope, man, that that you decided to come on and share the wisdom with us and, you know, everybody that's watching. Because like you said, Stat, like, if you ain't tapped into this, I don't know what else y'all want. Like, mm-hmm. this like this ain't happening every day, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So um, I appreciate you for that, bro. I'm going to be super more tapped in with the Trusted Legacy, of course. I'm definitely going to need some merch, man. I know you mm-hmm. had the shop go up, so – Tap in with that. Um, we're going to have all that um, below for y'all so y'all can go ahead and be able to tap in as well. But we'll just give you the last word, man. Whatever you want to say, you can close this out. Man, first of all, I want to say thank you to both of y'all um, for, you know, having me on here. I think that y'all got something great going. I think that it's different um, because of what y'all aim is. You know, you got the – you bridging the gap. You bringing on the youngest. You bringing on a lot of legendary people – to really get a story and to really dig into where they mentals are now. And I think that's just different from just coming on here and talk about what they did in their career. Um, Understanding people's mentalities and what they had to go through and what they going through currently and how they able to get over it is a whole different thing. So, you know, from the seven, man, I think it's, I think it's something great. I think it's something new. I think it's something organic. And I think it's gonna be something very big, man. So I appreciate y'all for having me. Sure, man. we oh, appreciate sure. that. That's man. that's that's huge right there. Yeah. I might throw a headband on tonight. I ain't <laughs> <laughs> gonna hold it. That's, that's, fact, that's love because we, we 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 in them trenches right now trying to yeah. get this going. And this 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 right. like that same boost you, you start got somewhere. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And that same you boost you got when you trenches. was hooping, like when that motherfucker said something about that crowd, like that was that right there. That man. was that. That was we that. really we really. We really have a vision for this, and and for somebody like you to see it is dope, man. But look, man, we appreciate everybody listening in, yo. 
legendary episode. Legendary. Share this with a friend. Like the video. Subscribe. Watch it three, four times. Take out your notepad. Listen, this conversation right here, man, is one of those ones that you ain't got to hear nothing else to get that battery in your back to go do what you need to do with your life. Yep. And that's just what it is. You know, I ain't even got to say too much more than that. Um, and this is the type of content that we're trying to bring with this platform. This is just the beginning right here. And again, to have you here for that is just, is mind blowing, man. But we appreciate you, man. Again, everybody that tapped in, we appreciate y'all. Remember, stay focused on the mission, man, and run your race. It's only a matter of time before you get the success that you create. Stay on the grind, man. Do what you got to do to get to that point. Tap in with us. Um, again, it's Deuce and Stat. We got Rice is nice in this motherfucker, Rice man. Rice is nice. We appreciate y'all tapping in. We'll see y'all next week. That's yes, indeed, man. See Keep y'all going. Next time. Working on a weekend like usual. Way off in the deep end like usual. Niggas swear they passed us. They doing too much. Haven't done my taxes.